See, look at this. I'm on bottles and everybody else is on cans. What kind of shit is this? <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. Someday we'll grow up and move over to bottles. I'm curious Pretty about that one, Jimmy. David, that was aggressive. See, look, see, that's what I'm saying. You, you guys got all the, the fancy pours and look at this, the fancy glasses and stuff. I mean, like, man, you know, I'm just just trying to fit in here. <laughs> yeah, you're oh, doing I fine. It. I love it. It really does. Oh, he's chugging time. it, too. Especially to student, of cheers first, dude. student of the game. I know, cheers, you guys. To... Good to cheers. see you all. Cheers. cheers, guys. Great to be here. I'm, where's the sound effects? I would expect some kind of sound effects the way, you know, Eric is, uh, you know, coaching all this stuff. I throw them it's in not... when I edit it. A little laser yeah. beam, a little yeah, spring. Something. Boing, boing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Eric, man. Don't get him going. <laughs> God, how long? How long is this gonna be? I'm already. I'm already waiting for this to be over with. <laughs> you only got two more hours. No big deal. I know. It's like, what did I get myself into? Hey, however long it takes to get through it, okay? We'll be here all night if we have to. <laughs> and with how much you night. talk, who knows how long it's gonna be? Oh, come on, man. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you going to go there? God. I mean, we like I said, we just started. I mean, like, come on. I mean, let's get at least warm me up a little bit. Jeez. <laughs> ah, I love you, baby. Thanks for coming on, dude. <laughs> God. Jesus That's great Christ. to have you on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it. All right, let's see what everybody's drinking. Jimmy, what did you crack? Uh, this That's is, uh, yeah, the next... Um, Three by three, which is a collaboration uh, between Omnipolo. When we had uh, Hans on, we did one, um, but it's this one's from Green Cheek, out of Costa Mesa, California, and it's a collaboration with Omnipolo, Fidens, Weldworks, Root Branch, Equilibrium, and Vitamin C. So um, catch all those names, David. You familiar um, with all those places? Uh, Costa Mesa is all I like hot. That's, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> 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 um, but it's a, a triple, um, and uh, it's uh, ten point one, so it's it's up there. But uh, looking forward to it. See Hold me. Up the glass I again. I would have took one sip of that, and I would have been probably on the floor. <laughs> You're like this guy's That's drinking really, straight uh, gas. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty thick too. I mean, is that like a is that like a milkshake or something, or like what is that? It's pretty dang close. <laughs> it's probably oh, like it? the worst milkshake you've ever had. Um, <laughs> if you're looking for a milkshake, if yeah. What's the uh, what, what's the octane on that one? Uh, it's ten point one, um, and uh, they're doing it with Citra, Matweka, and Ruwaka. And I'm not. And I'm really that excited right, to try that one. Green Cheek, is, Green Cheek is a fantastic brewery. I've had a, a lot of their stuff in the past, and. It's been a while since I've had anything from them, but that one looks amazing. I'm glad you're able to get those. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I was able to get just a couple of them, but. Um... Oh, so just for me and you, not the other guys? No, no. Yeah, perks of being the, the head honcho. <laughs> well, I mailed it to the wrong person, but that, yeah, it's, if you want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Paul, what are you drinking, buddy? Uh, well, tonight um, got some uh, dirty dancing going on here. I nice. love, uh, love that look, can. That, that can is couple. awesome. That yeah, is that's pretty awesome. That's pretty sick, huh? It's a yeah. broccoli um, guy and a Sasquatch lady. Yep, nothing but the best. Um, this one's a uh, um, collaboration with Great Notion and Other Half. I didn't realize that till fairly recently, but uh, it's it's a. Uh, it's not that uh, 10% that Jimmy's coming out of the gate with, but this one's uh, 8.5, super smooth, double IPA, um, just released here a couple weeks ago. So uh, super fresh and uh, great. Nice. And that one has Ruraka as well, um, as well as uh, Mosaic maybe, I forget. Yeah, I didn't look at the profile. Galaxy and Ruraka and something else. Yeah, come back to me on that. I need to, I'll look at that one. I'll look it up real quick. They did that one a couple of years ago, but um, I noticed they changed the hops in it. 
this time around. That's why I wanted to get it again because it was good last time. But um, Baraka is one of my favorite hops. So, did you try it yet? I haven't. No, I just just came in yesterday. Oh, in that uh, in that rough box. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even a box by the time I got here. It was like a soggy clump bag. Yeah. <laughs> in a grocery bag. It was a bunch of survivors, <laughs> is what that was. My entire beer fridge smells like maple syrup now. There's <laughs> worse. It could, it could be worse. <laughs> For sure. Some rotten yeast or something. Oh, yeah. It's the one that got me. A dog started like circling it in the kitchen. <laughs> I, while uh, Paul's trying to figure that out, I cracked open Hydra Hostility. Uh, knew I needed to crack one of these on the show because this is. In my top three, if not my all-time favorite smoothie sour I've had ever that they did uh, late last year. This is by Mortalis. Collab with Ill Will Brewing, which I'd never heard of before. 7% uh, brewed with cantaloupe, banana, and pineapple, and also pistachio. And the main reason I wanted to grab this one is because cantaloupe is my favorite fruit. And I make cantaloupe smoothies a lot, so... I always, I always hoped that they would do like a cantaloupe smoothie sour. So when they finally did, I snagged a bunch of these and I don't regret it because this thing is absolutely phenomenal. I haven't tasted that one yet, but it's in the fridge. I would drink it ASAP. It still tastes really good, but I think the cantaloupe is fading <clears throat> and banana is kind of the strongest flavor now, but it's still really good. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I have no idea how they made that. I tried it as soon as it came and I was like, this is like serious chemistry. It's insane. Yeah. Sing fucks. <laughs> you like cantaloupe, DT? Yeah. Why not? Some people don't like cantaloupe. No, nah, cantaloupe uh, is delicious. I was just saying, I don't think I've ever heard somebody say that this is their favorite fruit, though. Oh, I it's so good. Like, it's super unique. Like apples and, or blueberries, uh, but it's because all other fruit kind of tastes the same. I don't know, like they all like cantaloupe is super different than everything else. It doesn't really taste like anything else. No, I but agree. It's, but it's only if you get a good one though, too. I mean, not uh, they're hard to pick perfect. out too. Yeah, I mean, you know, not all cantaloupe is created equal. Yeah, you don't want it like all dry. You want like a nice, juicy, like really rich orange one. Right. How right, do you feel right, about yeah. honeydew, Eric? Honeydew is awesome. Okay, I can holds curve. up holds up well as well. Stays firm. Right? Yeah, but again, you know, honeydew is another one of those ones that you gotta you gotta get a good one. If you don't, yeah, if it's it. like too white or like not juicy enough, it's it's gotta be that nice rich green and yeah, yeah. similar yeah, I fruits. Though. I don't think I've ever had a good one. They're always like hard as rocks or melons. Melons soft. are tough. Like I feel like yeah. I hear all different things. They say like knock on it and if it's hollow, it's good. Knock on it if it's not hollow, it's good. Like I can never remember how it's supposed to be. It's because they all suck. <laughs> <That's pretty much laughs> <it>. <laughs> you just get lucky. Yeah, you get you lucky. Know. That's it. You know, the, the best place you got to go to if you want like the right mm -hmm. pick of the fruit is that uh, those edible arrangements. Because for whatever reason, those are always like on point. They never mess that up. The fruit is always like just right, nice and sweet. Um, you never get a bad piece of fruit out of one of those. But I mean, you know, you're going to pay some money for it. But at least you'll you just get, buy like, yourself an edible arrangement to chomp on over the weekend. Why not? I mean, if you want to <laughs> treat yourself, you want, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, why not? If you want the fruit and you want it right, this is the best place to go. They never fail, man. They're like their fail rate is like like zero percent they're always on point huh. that's a good pro that's a good pro tip yeah, i'm gonna tag yeah. them in the instagram post <laughs> yes new sponsor for the show yeah we'll yeah. all be having the well we'll all have these like extravagant edible arrangements in the next episode like just <laughs> chomping it while we're talking and just think each each piece of fruit will be will be right you know what i'm saying you won't have to worry about the the bitter and the hard piece of uh melon yeah. or anything like that because they've really already cut call. it up, so they're like hand picking the best stuff for yeah, I don't the know, bouquet. Man. I don't know. I think they got first dibs on something. They yeah. got the inside <laughs> track. Yep. That's a good call. Did you figure out what hops are in that beer, uh, Paul? 
Yeah, I did. It's got, um, uh, let me see. What's the one that you were thinking of it had? Ruwaka. Yeah. So it's got uh, Citra, uh, Galaxy, Ruwaka, and a touch of uh, Sabaro. Oh, yeah. I just forgot about that one. Yeah, it's got notes of uh, passion Sabro. fruit. Sabro, thank you. Uh, passion fruit, white grapefruit, uh, dole, whip, and pineapple soft serve. Come on. Sabro is kind of a weird hop because a lot of times it has like a coconut flavor, which I really like coconut, but in an IPA, I feel like coconut can be kind of off-putting, kind of like like a sunscreen taste or, you know what I mean? Like a weird artificial sweet taste. It, it can kind of come off like that, but if it's subtle, then it doesn't bother me. Hmm. That's a good call. Yeah, it's kind of a weird hop in my opinion. What are you drinking, Mikey? So I'm drinking, going non-alcoholic tonight. So go brewing. So I've been exploring a lot of these non-alcoholic beers lately. Um, we gotta get and, this guy off the show, dude. I don't know what he's yeah, doing here, so. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, there's a there's a ton of new new ones that are out there that are pretty good. And so go brewing. Sure. Uh, one of the ones I found recently. There it is. Uh, that that's actually good. I've had their IPA, and now this is their sour, uh, new school sour blueberry strawberry. Um, it's actually pretty good. So it's probably my favorite one so far. So I'll definitely be ordering more stuff for them. But I got a whole closet now full of uh, some NA beers that I'll be bringing out here. So a non-alcoholic yeah, sour is, is just a can of juice, dude. Yeah, it's carbonated juice. Yeah, <sighs> pretty much. Oh, it has a little carbonation. That's what I'm on. I should eat. Yeah. I should. I wish. I wish I would have known that because I would have got something like that. Yeah, dude. Uh, go if you if you're into it. Check out Go Brewing. They're really good so far. The two you have that to I've keep had. them refrigerated or just in the closet? Um, no, well, I, I mean, I do. I throw them in there Microwave before I drink. Before you pour it. Yeah, but they, <laughs> uh, I mean, it'll, yeah, I don't know. I'm keeping them in my cabinet, like, prior to putting them in my refrigerator. So, because I, I, like, I do everything, like, when I decided to try it, I tried it, like, all the way. So, I bought, like, a pallet full of beer, non-alcoholic beer. So, I don't have enough room in my refrigerator. So, hopefully, they'll be all right. Well, I don't, I don't, yeah, there's like nothing that could like go bad or like fade really. I don't think. Yeah, no, I don't think so. But, but yeah, no, this one's definitely pretty good. So, and actually, uh, this is one of the ones that Brent Clark uh, mentioned to me, I think. Because if um, there's no yeast, it won't continue to ferment it, or anything like that. And if there's no alcohol, right. it won't uh, eat it up or anything. Yeah. I don't think they say anything about that on there. What'd you bring tonight, David? Hey, I'm real simple. Like I told you, um, me personally, I like, um, you know, for yourself. So I'm sticking with a Mikey's hard lemonade. Um, this is actually the hard mango. Um, Fancy. This is only limited yeah, edition. Five, yeah, no, 5%, you know, 5% alcohol, um, courtesy of Lee's, Lee's liquor here in Las Vegas. Um, man, <laughs> I thought you would have had to trade something for that one. No, I mean, all kinds of flavors, but I like mango, you know, like we were talking about fruit. So, you know, mango just seemed like the, the right way to go. And it's it's quite tasty. Um, you know, you can't go wrong with a Mikey's Hard Lemonade and, you know, one of those various flavors. So, like I said, I'm not uh, snobbed out like you guys. <laughs> all this special stuff. <laughs> Crazy. I've never had a Mike's Hard Lemonade before. Oh, you have it? No, nah, am I missing out? It's pretty good. It's tasty. On heartburn. On oh. <laughs> <Hangover>. heartburn. <laughs> yeah, man. My my insides is feeling real good right now. So, <laughs> Hey, if you can nice tolerate it. And I drink one of those and I'd be like. Ugh. I mean, part of the thing is, like, obviously these beers that we get are really tasty like that's the main reason but also like i feel like they're made with better ingredients and everything than like the mass produced like garbage you can get at the grocery store and so like sure. i hardly ever get a hangover like it takes a lot to get a hangover but if i drink like a modello even if it's like five yeah. percent i'll like get a headache like before the night's even over so yeah, that's also uh part of what makes it worth it to me i don't know if it's just in my head but i feel like it's true no nah, i mean you're probably right you know um mass production of stuff you know they just kind of like cut and cut and copy and paste right so mm -hmm. um you know i'm sure there's probably uh certain ingredients in there that they they use that probably is a little bit different and you know causes 
guy's heartburn and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Makes you wonder what water they're using. But yeah, maybe. Shit, right. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mike, on those non-alcoholics, you should really uh, really? catalog those things. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to. Unlike Get a little side project. Yeah, I mean, because there's there's such a variation, and uh, you know, who knows? well, so and that's a, that's the thing too. So I was thinking about it, uh, thinking about it today. Like with the beers that we we normally drink, that you guys normally drink, like they're all so good because we we've curated them. We're getting them from the best breweries out there, and so they're all consistently good. So there's there's like almost no variability there. Whereas with these non-alcoholics, like. A lot of these breweries and stuff are just kind of dipping their toe in the water and so there's a lot i feel like there's very much in a trial and error phase right now so i think there's definitely some that'll that are going to be a lot better than others or at least that's what i found so far in the few that i've had so i think it'd be good to like you know throw those out there and kind of maybe save some people some time so i'll drink some of the ones that i know are not going to be that great and just kind of you know put them out there and just give my opinion of it so but yeah i think keep track of which ones are which is a good idea that's cool I got what have you been up to, ocean one, been up to David? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, man. You know, I've been laying low, work. You know, uh, Brandon, uh, my son, is you know in his basketball stuff right now. In fact, he's at a tournament tonight. Um, and since I I really like you guys and Eric, you're one of my closest buddies. I, I decided to miss out on that game. So if he goes off for like thirty points tonight and I don't get to see it, I'm gonna blame you. But, uh, <laughs> yes but um yeah man i just been laying low you know i've been you know in the lab working on images and um like i said just you know just i always like to i always kind of lurk in the shadows you know what i mean and like i'm not out there and all over social media like that so you know a lot of times i may seem like uh nothing's going on but you know i'm i'm steady busy i always got something going on have nice. you gotten out at all recently uh, actually, I was out yesterday afternoon for a little bit. Um, didn't get anything. We got some some fresh snow on the mountains over here, up at Red Rock. Like Rock uh, Red Rock Canyon or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked really nice, but uh, light wasn't that good. But um, it's always cool to go up there and just see, you know, what the conditions are gonna, you know, be like when you get up there. Um, but yeah, I didn't uh, didn't get much of anything. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was out at Death Valley. That was that was okay. Nothing nothing great nothing special i saw alex out there alex and tj um sarah ron which is really cool um that made the trip worth it because i was like you know talking with those guys but um didn't get anything really good uh the dunes look like shit right now because of all the rain total shit um you know there's no spines um just looks like just like just like humps hill. like yeah just humps um like moguls which, My, yeah, mikey yeah. was just out there for like five I was days. just out there. Yeah, oh, I just okay. got back. I just got back today, like literally two okay. hours ago. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, was that the first time you've been there, Mikey? No, I was like my okay. third. Yeah. yeah, so, um, which, you know, which is fine. I did get one cool image I'm pretty stoked about. There's a super sick patterns in the sand. It looks like these huge mountains. It's sick. Um, that made the trip worth it. Like I said, that one, that one image was really nice. And I haven't shot like any like cool abstract stuff in a while. So that was really, that was really cool to get something, you know, kind of different. Um, but yeah, other than that, man, I just been laying low waiting for, you know, the weather to kind of switch up a little bit and, you know, get down into some, into some stuff here soon. Nice. Well, cool. yeah, Mikey was in uh, Vegas yesterday. I was like, you should hit up David and uh, <laughs> go to chickpeas you know if you're hungry. <laughs> Yo, that place is like it's still over there, man. It's still around, around and kicking, man. Is that the only spot they have? Uh, they have a couple other ones, but they're not as good as that one for whatever reason. Mm. That that's like the original spot, and uh, that one's uh, it's pretty good. But yeah, man, Mikey, no love, man. I mean, like, what's up? You couldn't. I know, me, dude. Uh, shoot me a message. I mean, like, <laughs> that dude. So I was there. So I was. I was there for like six hours. I had a super early flight this morning, and my buddy was in town for the Super Bowl. So he was. Right. And we just found out about that coincidentally. So I had plans to meet up with him. Gotcha. And uh, so I did that, and then was I was in bed by about eight o'clock because I had to wake up about four to get to the airport today. So I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's kind of crazy right now too, because you know Super Bowl is here, and man, dude, it was me, freaking crazy it's, downtown or yeah, on the strip. Yeah, it's pretty wild, man. Because you know I do work over at the airport, you know, a few times a week, and uh, we were over there yesterday, and it was crazy. Like it was just like so dude. packed, yeah. so many people. It's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be a pretty busy week, and I'll, I won't be anywhere near that, but it'll be it'll be busy this weekend. Yeah, are you sure. are you a ways out of the city, David? Uh, I'm kind of in like the northwest ish, you know, side of town. So like, okay. I'm still like a, a good twenty minutes away from the strip. Um, cool. Yeah, so I don't, you know, a lot of that stuff. I don't even, I don't even see anything that goes on down there because I'm so far away. Cool. Cool. So what was the like last trip you did? Uh, last trip would have been the Europe stuff in November. You know, the, yeah, yeah, the Europe stuff, the three. Well, actually, no, it would have been Europe, but Europe slash Swamps. Um, you know, that was like a good shit, man. Like over three weeks of traveling at one time. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was That's uh, a lot. It was, man. I, I'll be honest with you. I was gone twenty. I think it was twenty three days, and all at one time. I think that's the longest that I've been away from home at at one time, and. Um, yeah, towards the end, it was it was tough. It was it was a little tough, but um, but it was cool though. I mean, you know, the conditions, you know, seeing new stuff, you know, revisiting the swamps is always cool for me. Um, you know, Eric and I had talked about it, just trying to you know go down there and do something different. Um, it's always challenging, but um, I think I managed to you know come up come back with some some pretty cool stuff um, that I haven't I haven't done before. So, where were so, you in Europe? Uh, so started off in the Netherlands, spent like um, like a week down there, and then um, I was teaching a Colina workshop in in uh, Sweden, oh, nice. and um, that was pretty cool. So you know that that was the second part of the trip. So pretty much in through that the Netherlands, um, some areas in Sweden, and then um, from there back to the states. Um, yeah, that was. Uh, that was it. A lot of, like I said, a lot of moving around, a lot of trees, um, a lot of trees, which was, you know, super cool because I, I love shooting forests. That's like my, you know, like my thing. If I, if I had anything that I can shoot all the time, it would be the forest. I would, I'd be out there like all the time. But um, which is why you live in the desert. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? Go figure. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but what was cool? What was cool is like, you know, when you're when you're out there and you see like completely new scenes, it's like, you know, you're, you get to like add all the stuff that, you know, I'm learning in the desert, shooting in the desert, you know, and all the concepts kind of, you know, apply to, you know, a lot of stuff that you, that you photograph. So um, seeing these various new scenes was super cool. It was just, it was fresh. It was nice. It was cool. Not seeing a lot of other photographers, you know, you know, especially from the U.S. So yeah, it was it was cool. It was real cool. Great experience. Nice, nice. Oh, and then Mikey's, prior to that, yeah. prior to that, I was uh, I did the ten days in Colombia too, which was like like oh, end sure. of September. So now that I'm thinking about it, when so got I me had, out. yeah, yeah. So I had was that when you went to like the bar mitzvah or whatever it was? Yeah, that shit was. You're sending crazy. me videos of you. Yo, this shit was crazy. So like, look. <laughs> I did, um, so September, so it was the end of September. So I did the, um, what was it? Like 11, I think it was 11 days in Colombia. Then I came back, was here for a week. Then I did a, I had a private up in Utah. I was there for five days, came back three days home. And then I went to Europe. So yeah, I was gone. Shit, man. Almost, damn, almost like a month. I think I was like almost four weeks, you know, four weeks of traveling at like, you know, in two months period of time, a month and a half. Damn. Yeah, it was crazy. And then, you know, that's cool. Gabriel. Yeah, it was cool, man. And then Gabriel, you know, sitting over there telling me that I'm going to go to some, you know, the Jewish New Year. And I'm like, like what? <laughs> what? Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> oh, it was just... is, it, is it the same day as like New Year's Eve, like normally? No, or is it like no, Chinese no. New Year where it's like a 
random it's like random yeah it was like random it was like in september i I can't remember the exact date based on some like ancient hebrew calendar or something something man i'm in here you know with the with his family wearing a yarmulke and whatnot is yeah crazy (laughs) like like, but it was a cool experience so it was super cool um you know i'm just you know just about trying new things and you know living different experiences and different cultures and that kind of thing so it was it was dope like it was a really cool experience and you know i'd definitely do it again it was it was odd it was different but uh you know you just just go with the flow man just that was it <laughs> and now hey, you're uh, hey. having the bruising views experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the most unique out there. <clears throat> hey, hey, Bennett, if you've got some of those pictures, we're in for a night. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you commandeer anything? I don't have anything locked and loaded. I uh, I wanted to go easy on David. I was thinking about reaching out to Kim to see if she had any dirt on you, but uh, I didn't get the chance. I've been really busy. Yeah, oh, man. Uh, man. Man, don't go easy on me, man. Don't spare me. I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> Keep it in the paint. Let's go. I know. Let's go. You know, <laughs> I'm with it. But I gotta say, <laughs> but I gotta say though, um, I was, I think I told you a long time ago, Eric, uh, Paul is one of the coolest dudes that I've ever met you know, throughout this photography community, you know, I met a lot of people and, you know, there's a handful of guys that are really stuck out that I've met in person. And Paul was one of them. I don't know if you remember that, Paul, it was probably like, not this well, Paul. I don't know who you're talking about, but <laughs> yeah, I remember that dude up in the gorge. Yeah. In the gorge. I think this is probably like 12, 13 years ago. Now it was a long ass time like ago. 2011 like, or yeah something like that but i remember leaving and i was like i was like damn that's a cool ass dude man i like that guy a lot yeah so yeah paul is uh he's solid he's he's a solid dude i like him he's good at first impressions but uh he'll let you it wears off yeah (laughs) it wears it wears off quick he runs out of jokes and (laughs) no it's we've yeah it's it's cool that we met way back then and um it's been um you know great to you know hop on the on a text thread or an email and kind of exchange stuff and yeah dude you're you're one of the best out there and um i'm i'm stoked to to call your friend so yeah i I really 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 love your work and been a massive fan forever so it's cool to have you on the show i appreciate that yeah it's just crazy like you know like going back way back then you know still kind of in my infant stages and, and that kind of thing and it's just kind of cool to, you know, still, you know, communicate with people that I, you know, I met early on. And like I said, man, I've always just had the, you know, the utmost respect for you and, you know, just a solid dude. And, you know, your work out there in Oregon and the, the Pacific Northwest is just, it's, it's good. It's real good. Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah. Some people you meet just like disappear a few years later or they do something whack or. But you know, like some of these other guys, you know, I can't, I can't speak on behalf of these other guys. <laughs> hey, you guys, mute your, no mute, your mute your microphones. We, we're uh, we're <laughs> together. You guys gonna take it from here? <laughs> exactly. Uh, nah, was last not, time okay. we saw, it, was last time we saw each other in uh, Hanksville a couple years ago? Uh, was that a? Uh... Is that when? No, I better not bring that up. You know, we let me chill on that. <laughs> no, bring uh, it up. I think so. <laughs> nah, nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. I mean, because I don't know who's gonna be watching this and what. Let so. <laughs> me leave that shit alone. But um, yeah, that was when we uh we were in Hanksville. We ran into Matt, right? Yeah. Yeah. A yeah, little bit. Yeah. yeah that we were chilling cool. at the gas station for a little bit. Yeah. Before we, because yeah, yeah, you had yeah. like a private, so we couldn't like really go yeah, shoot together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the last time, but um, yeah, man, you know, it's, uh, it's just crazy how the time just be flying by, though. It doesn't seem like that was that long ago. It seemed like no, that I feel like, like I just saw year. you, but when I was thinking about it, I was like, wait, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has been a hot minute, but, you know, we've also been communicating quite a bit, you know, you know, over since that time, so. Um, yeah, I and think doing critique seemed... groups, so we see each other. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty so, early. Yeah. Crazy. Nice. Well, uh, see what you brought to uh, check out tonight. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of crazy, and um, you know, hopefully, bring something a little bit different to the table. I know one of my picks already. Uh, you guys have you know mentioned on here, so um, but it's always good to bring this one particular person out. But you know, we'll get to it then. This one wow. is amazing. I I love Doug's wow. work, and I've been wanting to feature him for a long time because he's got fantastic stuff. Yeah, man. So. Um, so just with dog, he's, um, he's just some guy that I, I honestly just randomly found. I don't even, I didn't even find him. I think through Instagram or anything like that. I think I was just doing, you know, sometimes I go down the rabbit hole of areas that I want to shoot. And, um, you know, I just do these Google searches and certain images will pop up and his images was one of them. And this particular, uh, forest, I got a, an opportunity to visit when I was, you know, over in Europe and, this image is like, you know, it like this is what you see, you feel this. Um, I didn't have the, you know, the the fall colors um, that were, you know, present like this, but it was a little green about, still, right? A little bit of green. Yeah. But the thing is, like, like the ground coverage is just like that, you know, like I, I've never been to any forest out here in the States where you have that clean of coverage on the ground with this like the decayed leaves and that kind of thing yeah it almost but, looks fake like it's so perfect and it just like cleans yeah. up the ground so nicely it's like snow it, or something you know yeah it's so crazy and like you know these these particular forests they're like the trees are all scraggly and they each have their different kind of you know character and different flavor but you know it's it's really it's a place where you can definitely just get lost in because there's just so much to see and this image for me just did it and when i got a chance to experience this it was this image came to mind and it's you know it's just incredible how everything is just laid out here it's so good it really is i love like the the color and this image is perfect yeah like and, and it and it it kind of makes sense why you would pick this david because like that's one of the things i admire most about your work is how yeah perfectly and cleanly you render color and how yes. perfectly balanced the color is um and and that's that's definitely the case in this image too so um yeah great image i love the the cool fog in the background and how that's balanced by the warmer tones on the ground and the and the foliage remaining on the leaves and then the pop of green in the center yes it's, it's a beautiful image yeah david do you remember mikey from our critique group like uh, I, last year or something yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. I, totally I did that, that. And then I did a uh, private like one on one thing with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can never was, forget those images, huh? For it. Uh, What's yeah, that? that was a, yeah, that was a little while ago that we. Uh, yeah, I think that, I think show. that was before the critique group, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. but you're but you're right. Um, you know, a, a lot of stuff that you're going to see with the images that I picked and, you know, stuff that we talked about, Mikey. Um, yeah is um you know i'm real big on hard contrasts within a scene whether it be you know dark or lights or you know highlight shadows you know color contrast you know really gives a scene that that ultimate depth right and mm -hmm. what i like about this scene here is like you have all these hard contrasts within the scene that gives it that nice space and that nice um color separation um that we that we look for in the images no hard color cast or anything like that this everything is is flowing and working here because mm -hmm. i would imagine coming out of camera you know we've talked about this before with some other images that have come up in previous episodes but coming out of camera the color was i'm sure not anywhere near this balanced i'm sure you know depending on what you use for a white balance setting or you know it probably had a pretty yeah. pronounced color cast um sure. that he was able to tease out um you know, I, again, as you do, um, so you know, really, really tastefully edited, uh, which really I think adds to the scene. Yeah, I love how the fog is cool, so it contrasts nicely against the warm foliage, but it's not blue. Like, yes, right. it feels cool, but when you look at it straight on, like it's not blue at all. Doesn't it like really it's not tasteful? 
Yeah, it's not purple. You don't have that purple or that, like you said, the the deep blue or anything like that, where it would be super easy to go. Um, yeah. Obviously, when you're, you know, shooting foggy scenes or mist or anything like that, you know, those, that t has a tendency to go blue just like right away. And especially when you're doing any kind of contrast adjustment, it just adds to that blue. Um, I just see here like something that's very well controlled and um, thoughtfully processed. Um, which I, I really appreciate. And again, just like I get the feeling of I'm I'm there in the forest. And um, that's just, you know, really special to me when I when I get that feeling in an image. That's a good that's a good call. Like you do get that feel and the depth that the fog adds to it is I mean, I, I just I start here in the front and then I just work my way back through the image. It's it's really captivating. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and the man. tree form is really pretty amazing too. It's like I don't I can't say I've ever seen trees that look like that, but the you know mm -hmm. these kind of wavy trunks and wavy branches is just kind of really kind of captivating. Yeah, these you are would, beach you, trees, I imagine. Yeah, the beach trees. You would actually really like it there. Um, just how this whole scene is you know i think all you guys would you know go here and just be like wow you know just be like just blown away and you guys would have a really good time just wandering around just trying to you know pick out compositions and yeah. you know really think about you know what you're seeing and what you're feeling um you know i'm really big on you know the feel of you know of a place and um like this is one of those landscapes where you can get that just uh, the feeling of just being there and you know the the ethereal feeling when you do have the you know atmosphere like this it's crazy how big of an area is this so um it's actually this particular forest um is pretty big um there's it's kind of crazy because like you can go to like one area of this it's I don't know if you want to call it like it's not like a national park more like a state park i guess if you will um you can go to one section like this and the trees are you know spaced out a little bit more then you could go to another section where it's a little bit more dense and the trees are a lot thicker um canopy is a lot you know a lot more dense um you get more curvature in the trees you know the trees have more of a dancing kind of feel to it so the area is actually it's pretty big but each area provides like a different look and a different feel. Um, the character of the trees is a little bit different. That's wild. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's so interesting good. to say that. Like, there's definitely some state parks here in the United States which are just as pretty as some of the national parks. Yeah, and then what's cool too about the Netherlands, which is it's 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 wild. So you can literally just drive like into you know eric's neighborhood and then they'll just have like a random park and then you can just go walk through the park and there's stuff like this everywhere there i mean like just awful of public streets and you know on different roadways i mean this kind of stuff is everywhere in the netherlands it's 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 insane it's crazy crazy wow and then um the other thing that was kind of cool that i i learned about is that um like all the mushrooms all the crazy shrooms that you see like albert droves shooting and stuff like that um they only come out at a certain time of year which is like you know like october going into november and those mushrooms are like all over the place like the ground could just be just like filled like literally every step that you take <laughs> is just filled with different kinds of mushrooms of different colors and sizes and, and that kind of thing so um that's also another added you know interest to these particular forests that like i said you can just spend like literally all day shooting in there you know if you got cloudy uh rainy days which i had like a good majority of the time like i mean i was in those forests for hours just walking around just you know finding random stuff to shoot so um there's a lot and you of posted a, a photo of the mushroom like on a tree trunk didn't you yeah 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 one yeah that yeah the thing was yeah it was super crazy and you know it was, it was different you know for myself i, I you that's know, pretty was, different I'm, for you yeah i was surprised yeah, it, was. That it was you and i saw yeah yeah i mean um you know again i always say like i just let like the landscape and the light kind of dictate how i photograph you know a scene um and you know that particular scene um you know that mushroom was it was just begging to be shot it just had a lot of character a lot of detail the little 
you know, thorns on there or whatever's coming off of them. Um, just super cool and super unique and, you know, something super different for myself. And uh, yeah, man, I just, uh, you know, got down to business with that one. I love how he has like those broken tree trunks too, like the stumps that are snapped off yeah. throughout the scene. Yeah. Cause I feel like those could potentially be really distracting and like throw the whole thing off, but they work really yep. nicely here as well. Well, you know, one of the things that, um, that I've been accepting, you know, over time, especially with shooting, you know, these chaotic forces, you know, they're never perfect. I mean, very seldom do you run into a perfect forest and um, there's only some, there's only so much that you can do, right? For me, when I look at the scene, like you, like you mentioned, Eric, like the, the broken stump, like kind of in the middle, but the trees in the foreground are so unique and have so much character like I don't even really notice that my eye doesn't get drawn there because the you know the, the foreground composition how the image starts off is so good I don't even really pay attention to that um, I kind of get lost within the scene um, by just you know what's in the front so um, mm -hmm. you know the landscape is not perfect by no means um, trying to organize it in a way that makes sense is the challenging part but I think uh, I think he did an awesome job with that yeah and that's that tree that's like dead center is perfect too like uh it's like the most interesting tree in the frame and then yep. even though it's like dead center it doesn't feel like it's like splitting the frame in half at all or anything because sometimes that bothers me when you have like a tree trunk right in the middle or on the third or something it kind of feels like it's folding the photo like or separating everything yeah i think too like you know that's a you know very good point and you know you try to get like certain kind of spacing you know within the scene <clears throat> but what i but what i see here um and what i like is like directly behind the center tree he has like another set of trees that kind of have their own movement and you know if you move to to the left too much you know maybe something else you know appears you know you move to the right maybe it blocks out you know the other second tree you know that's back there in the in, in the center of the frame but what i see here is it's giving the scene a little bit more space and a little bit more depth so um i think that uh kind of helps out this scene quite a bit yeah and like looking at the scene like it's so serene and like perfect feeling but i mean i don't know how it was for dog to shoot it but i feel like it wouldn't be yeah. easy for anybody else to just like walk up and shoot this scene in a way that works mm -hmm. like it's been done so well, it makes it look easy, but I think yeah. that's kind of deceptive. Well, yeah. I will tell you after visiting this place, it's it's a hard place to shoot. It, it yeah. is really challenging, but um, there's a lot of potential in there. That's, that's how I'll say. <laughs> yeah, I would love to <laughs> photograph it. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll eventually share some stuff from there, um, you know, after I let it marinate for a little bit longer. How much unreleased work do you feel like you're sitting on? Uh, well, I got a whole Columbia gallery right now. Just it's it's done. Like it's the Columbia stuff is done. I think I did. I show you any of that stuff? I don't remember if I did or not. Some of it. I feel like every time we talk, you show me new stuff, and then I never see it get posted anywhere. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's done. Like it's it's sitting there. Like it's all done. The images are arranged. Like it's yeah. I I like I really enjoying how this one turned out because it's again it's just different, right? Um, and so like what what are you waiting for to release it like how do you try to space out your releases or like what's your thought process behind releasing galleries um well the one thing that i try to avoid is like image fatigue um you know we see so many like releasing on... stuff too consecutively yeah 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 like i feel like you know we see so much every day and um you know, I still want my work to be a little bit different and, you know, still stand out to some degree. Yeah. Um, but I try to space that out, you know, where, again, where I don't have to give people image fatigue. If I drop a, you know, like a gallery that has 30 to 35 images, that's a, that's a lot of work, right? And then maybe a month later, if I were to do the same thing, you know, they'd be like, oh, you know, he, DT is dropping something else again. Yeah, um, you're kind of just like, like burying your own work with new stuff. 
maybe because right. they might not even right. have enough time to digest it before the new stuff comes out yeah and exactly. then also everybody else is constantly releasing stuff like we're overwhelmed by photographs it's not like there's not enough like there's too many there's like right. three and a half billion uploaded every day so like yeah you also have to take that into account as well like what everybody else sure. is releasing in between your releases yeah so you know and i try to you know i try to again just space it out for my own you know for my own mental sanity because like <clears throat> As you know, Eric, like putting those gallery together, it's it's a lot of work, right? Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of processing. It's a you know a lot a lot you know that goes into putting everything you know into that. And by the time I get done doing those gallery release, like I'm wiped mentally just because you know I've just like put so much thought into it. Yeah. So um, I always like to kind of you know give everything a chance to breathe and um, you know. Uh, for people to digest as well um because even like with my columbia stuff it's it's going to be a lot and i know like it's probably not going to resonate with everybody because you know you know everybody has their own taste and their own you know likings and, and that kind of thing and you know it's totally cool but for me again i always try to you know bring something different to the table if i can mm -hmm. i think it's important though because uh yeah, like when you're releasing work, you don't want to like dilute the impact of your previous work by releasing something new too quickly. Sure. And then also like, yeah, people might not see it right away when you release it. So they might not see it until like two or three weeks after. And then if something else comes out like right after that, that's not really doing yourself any favors because they might not give your images yeah. the attention they need or deserve. Right. And then right. I feel like a lot of guys too, like uh, maybe when they first start posting their work, they'll have like a lot of stuff and they'll like throw it out all at once and they'll set like a really like fast pace for themselves that isn't sustainable. Yes. And then yep. they kind of become irrelevant because people like are expecting like new work constantly and then they can't keep doing that. So I feel like it's better to like start out slow and like maybe speed up or keep yep. it slow, like have yep. room to speed up rather than going too fast and trying to slow down because yeah. like that can just uh mess everything up for yourself yeah i totally agree with that and then the other thing too you got to keep in mind you know i just released my my website you know that whole the whole website was like a whole like that's like a major major you know like new release makeover real because because like you know you have a whole new website you got hundreds of images that you know i hadn't even shared you know people that follow me may you know know some of the new stuff some people may not but well, and I um, doubt you carried over everything too. I'm sure you curated and got rid of some stuff like this. Yeah, house cleaning. exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I had a ton of new images there, like a lot. So, you know, in a sense, that was kind of like a, a huge new release for me. So, um, and that was back in like, I think that was October that I, you know, released a new work. So, you know, I, you know, I can, I can go a good six to eight months with, you know, holding on to images and, you know, waiting for, you know, the right time to release new work. Yeah, I think it's uh, important too not to release stuff too quickly. Because there's been so many times where I've like waited a few months and then made like tweaks that really saved an image. Sure. Or like uh, got rid of some stuff that just didn't stand the test of time that I'm glad I never released, you know, because that yeah. initial excitement can kind of blind you like it feels good. But then like you might be excited about the experience you had, which is kind of like blinding you to like, the quality of the actual photo you created from that experience. And then, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so true. absolutely. This one is really crazy. I've never seen anything like Whoa. this. I don't know what kind of flowers those are. They look yeah, like lupins so, on steroids, but they're like red. Yeah. Yeah. So, huge. um, yeah. That? So one of the reasons, uh, it's like Kamchatka or something. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what that is, but um, I I picked this image, and it, and this was really hard because um, wow. you know I always try to you know I told you Eric I'm gonna be digging in my bag tonight, and um, uh, Stefan and Isa Isabella um, Sanatsky are um, a couple that I've been following for since I started, and. Um, their work is very understated. It's not going to be like the wow factors on social media. I mean, they barely, they barely even post on social media. Um, they're from Europe. And um, they basically all the, I don't know, the remote Southwest desert stuff, they have pretty much 
you know, photographed it and was doing that way, way before you see any of the stuff that you're seeing now on the, you know, all on the, online and stuff like that. But they're always going to unique places. Um, they always have something different. They always have something really special. Um, you know, I don't really, the technical aspects of the image, I don't really, you know, that's kind of irrelevant for me. But when I see something new and something fresh like this, that's, you know, it's taking me there. And um, whoever's watching this, all I can tell you right now is follow them. Go to the Shanaski's website. Um, Stefan and Isa both have amazing work. Um, in my opinion, um, those two have the best images from Iceland that you'll ever see. Um, and I know that's, you know, saying a lot because a lot of people have gone to Iceland. But if you guys want to see some really special rare Iceland stuff, go to their website and I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Yeah, I'd never heard of them, so I'm not familiar with any of their work, but man, it's 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 crazy. Like, I mean, um, Isa, um, Stefan's wife, um, she's great. She's freaking awesome. Um, I ran into them a couple of years ago um, when I was in Colorado and they were like, yeah, we're here doing a project. We're um, doing a calendar and it's completely new, like a new calendar for them. Cause I guess they had did an old calendar from stuff from Colorado and, you know, some of the surrounding areas. And they were like, yeah, we, you know, this was, you know, our old calendar was like, or book or whatever it was, like, you know, it was like 15 or almost 20 years old. So they wanted something completely new. And, you know, just, like just even the basic stuff that they've gone out there and, and, and photographed is just so nice and it's clean. It's not over processed. It's just natural and, you know, really great people and just amazing, amazing, amazing work. And again, I'm drawn into that exploration aspect of it, of seeing new, new places. And yeah, they, they check all the boxes for that. It's yeah, I mean, it has that other otherworldly look to it. It's like I it's can't crazy. say I've ever seen that landscape before. You know, it's yeah, like, right, right. Is yeah, that on this like, planet? <clears throat> yeah, it's yeah. Every I think once it's like you... Kamchatka, like uh, Russia. It's like uh, I don't know. Okay. That, that's what it makes me think of. So the Eastern plant side. is um, the plant is called the Pride of Madeira, mm. uh, which is. is... Well, my data yeah, is in Spain. That. Let's see if this thing tells me where it goes. Uh, yeah, they got some great. Yeah. I'm on the website that, right now. That stuff is great. Paul, go to their um, go to the Iceland the Iceland galleries. It's insane. And um, when I was talking to them, you know, I found out a little bit more, you know, about um, the Iceland stuff. They say that they go there every year and they spend like I think she said they spend like six six or seven weeks there at a time. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah, because I, I can't remember where they, I don't know if they're from Germany or somewhere over there in, in Europe, but they spend a ton of time in Iceland, like a lot, and it shows, it definitely shows. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, uh, this composition here is really impressive, though, because like, I mean, first of all, just like the spacing between the flowers, if you look like it's perfectly done between like every okay. single one, there's like hardly any overlap, which looks near impossible in this case. Yep. And uh, like the foreground, like this flower is like really up in your face, which is cool yep. because they're so unique. Like it's nice to be able to appreciate their details, but it still leads you into the scene. And that little mountain in the background just poking out from the atmosphere, like still is where your eye goes. Like it's 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 sticking out just enough to be like, like the subject. I mean, I think it's like mostly about the flowers because that's kind of the, the most unique aspect of this yep. one but it's it's not like you don't just get like stuck in the foreground like you still get led into right. the scene through all the layers and into the background there yeah it's so cool like i just love how this scene is composed and i really <laughs> struggle trying to find something you know different and unique from their website because everything on their website is different different and unique but this mm. again with these flowers and like you said eric the, the spacing and like it has like this <clears throat> like this almost natural framing that kind of frames the mountains in the background, mm -hmm. frames the peak in the background. And it just, you know, the red, right? You just have this hard red 
that's not overly done, but it's, you know, nice and, 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 and subtle, in my opinion, it's not overly saturated. And your eye just goes right to these flowers, frames up the peaks in the background, and I can just, my eye just flows effortlessly, effortlessly through this whole scene without any, any hangups at all. And, yeah, because you know, one of my, one of my biggest pet peeves, like, especially with wildflowers, <laughs> is, like, when people use a wide angle to, like, magnify them so they're like so fucking big that they're like bigger than the subject in the background and it's like yep. yeah it looks cool but like it's not yep. visually like effective like it's, it's so jarring you just get like stuck in the foreground everything else is like irrelevant behind it right 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 and then the cool thing too like with with Isa and Stefan they're not you know they're not like the super like techie you know hardcore you know uh, focus stacking or you know um, you know doing the, I don't know, crazy focal blends and all that other stuff, which is nothing wrong with that, but their work is pretty straightforward, you know, pretty natural. So um, when I saw this, I thought this was very impressive and um, super cool scene. And again, all the color contrast, like in the foreground, you know, the cool rocks against like the red and green uh, bushes and, and grass. And then just enough atmosphere in the background to give it that nice separation of the of the layers, um, which is like I said, it just it just it just flows. It's, God, it's crazy, man. Paul, what the fuck yeah. are you doing over there? You're like putting together a model yeah. airplane on your desk or something. I I, I know Paul. <laughs> no, it sounds it sounds like Paul. He's like tinkering around. I know. No, like, dude, he's like unwrapping like gifts or something like that it's like that <laughs> that scene in that scene in fight club when tyler durden's in the basement making a racket and he's trying to talk on the phone i feel like that's what we're doing here <laughs> I, got, I got two things happening one um i was listening to dt and i looked at the iceland uh shit and those yeah. ice scapes dude are real mm. dude, they're so Amazing. clean are you on they're the sharp. website yeah they're Shard clean itself. oh man they are they're really really good and then yeah. secondly, um, I was cracking another beer, you bastards. Well, let me share mine first because I cracked on this now. <laughs> yeah, there's this a right lot here. of... Is uh, Eugene Zach's, which is one of my favorite double IPAs that Fidens does. But this one has pineapple added to it. And uh, so this is uh, Citroen Galaxy, 8.5%. Uh, but then they added pineapple as well. And... Uh, I'm not usually a fan of fruited IPAs because I really enjoy hot flavors. So I feel like a lot of times the fruit can just like kind of overpower all the subtle, like nice floral and fruity hot flavors because it's so like obvious. But the way they add fruit, like pineapple and mango and stuff to their IPAs is like, it just kind of enhances the hops and it's like a really nice addition. And it's more like an aftertaste. So it's still like very hot forward, but then you get like pineapple at the end, which is really nice. So just to change things up a bit. That's a great one, dude. That's one of my favorites. Mm. Yeah, that one was. I didn't care for the mango. The mango ones don't seem to hit right, but a couple of them really? are really good. I love the they use it up with mango. That one was so good. That might have been that the best fruited IPA they've done. Yeah. That's true. That was really good. <laughs> I'll take that back. <laughs> David's on the edge of his seat right now. He's like, whoa. Yeah. Double IPA, <laughs> mango, pineapple. Well, well, when you said mango and pineapple, I kind of perked up a little bit. I'm like, oh, mango and pineapple. <laughs> You're like these guys, these guys might be onto something. <laughs> the the last might. time I was at David's house was like a few years ago, and I had like a bunch of beer with me, and oh, I was like, God. you don't want any, man? He was like, nah, I'm good, and I was just drinking by myself. Oh, <laughs> oh no, because. Mm. Yeah, because uh, Kim didn't Kim didn't have anything with you, right? Nah. Uh, okay. I had a bunch of good stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, I remember you came in with all this beer, and I'm like, "What the fuck is that?" Like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was probably like a roller case with just like loaded down. <laughs> yeah. It was a full Dude. cooler because I was starting like a, a two week trip yeah. in Death Valley. A two week. I was, that was, I was meeting up with Gabriel actually. That was like oh. March. Oh, that's uh, 2018, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Gabriel Eisenband, our Colombian yeah, friend. He, yeah, he like he pulls up, and he pulls up this cooler, and he's like, he opens it up, and he's showing me all this stuff. I'm like, 
I don't know what this shit is. <laughs> it was like a it was like a pelican case, and I cracked it, and right. like all this like smoke came out, like all this, it's all like this dry like, fog. Yeah. yeah. He has LED lights. Tom's on the just inside. like, what the yeah, hell? LED what, the, what the hell? You bring it in the house, dude. Get that shit out of here. <laughs> oh, shit, like, even legal? Right, man. I was like, I was like, man, you got me, man. I don't, I don't know what any of this stuff is. <laughs> it's funny. That's how Bennett rolls, man. Did I see you crack uh, a, a ghost diamonds? Yeah, that's what I cracked, nice. you guys. I good call. Um, yeah, uh, Eric worked hard for this one for us. Uh, for the network, he put in the time. This I think this one sold out in about 15 minutes, right, Eric? It did, yeah, really quickly, right after I bought yeah. it. Pretty, pretty fantastic. It's a uh, double do double dose of uh, Galaxy Hops. Um, you know, it's got uh, that uh, cantaloupe flavor to it. Some sweet tarts, some mango sorbet, and uh, man, it so, is creamy so, and good. So anytime you say mango, like I'm like, oh, mango, <laughs> mango. Well, well, Tom's is like, mango in it, depending on how like, it's done, it could be good or bad. Or, uh, the Thompson's give like a mango flavor. He's like, roll that case back over here for a minute. I want to see what's in that thing. <laughs> yeah. It's a bigger case now. He's had some years to. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. hey, hey Jimmy, I forgot to bring this up in the intro, like I meant to. But um, who was it yeah. that uh, bought us some beer this week? Uh, I'm gonna have to look that one up. It was what? the kind gentleman. Yeah. We had a donation. Uh, donated a four pack. A donation. Yeah, let's see. We a have a, a major donor here. Um, major. Oh, this is sounding <laughs> uh, this is sounding good. Scott <laughs> Half. Um, I'm not sure where he's from. I haven't checked in on him yet to thank him profusely. But we got a yeah, a massive donation. Um that's cool. Yeah. We're set. Nice. Well, Scott, whenever you are, uh, throw a comment down underneath this video. Well, let us know who you are. So thank Hit us you, up Scott. on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I didn't I didn't get any part of the donation, but you know, I'll just thank these guys uh, for you, Scott. So thanks, Scott, for the donation. Yeah, we really appreciate yes. the donations. I mean, we could we could like throw up advertisements in our videos and make like millions and millions, millions of dollars. Probably, yeah. Yeah, but we choose not to because we want to keep this core. You know, we want to keep this like right. keep it real. Real. We don't want to yeah. have any interruptions or anything like that. So we really appreciate the donations, guys. If you feel like buying well, us a beer, you can uh, find the link in the show notes. We don't want to sell out. I mean, we're just yeah. kind of keeping this thing uh, local. We could a bit. easily. We've had yeah, so many just, offers that we've turned down. Yeah, yeah. keep it well, local. Cannon tried to buy us out like after the second episode and so no. just remember remember the date of this because next year when you know I'm watching this and you know welcome to so and so's advertisement yeah. and I'm like and I'm like <laughs> you right. yeah. well, <laughs> <range box. laughs> tripods core is light yeah. Yeah. it'll be brought yeah. to you by brought to you by Bud Light yeah. <laughs> in oh, this is this is a this is a, a production that's sponsored by you know the Walking Dead IPA and then I'm gonna sit up there and I'm gonna sit up there and go yeah you remember when Paul was sitting up there saying that you guys didn't want to sell out? <laughs> Meanwhile, everybody's, everybody's got a everybody's got a price. Maserati. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everybody's got a price. Everybody's got a price. I like how All you pick them off. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, that's so good. That's oh, so good. Yeah, anyways, there's a really amazing image. I'm uh, excited to get on their website and check out more because this is really yeah, promising. Yeah. Definitely. Like yeah, they don't. Uh, they don't have an Instagram. Well, they have an Instagram page, but there's nothing on it, so I don't think they, they're don't too even, active on that. Yeah, don't even bother with the Instagram. Like I said, whoever watches this episode, just copy and paste the name there, bookmark it, take your time, go through the website. It's it's on another. You're gonna level. have That's to copy and paste it because I don't know if I could. Type that out. Yeah. Yeah, that one's <laughs> this. This, like I said, this this website here, you won't you won't be disappointed. It's Sinatch. a lot of a lot of good. Yeah, a lot Sinatch. of good shit in there. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 is that was a good one. That was a good one to put, pull up there, David. Yeah, really Very different. Choice. Nice to see some new names. I cracked sure. open a uh, another one too here. So this one is uh, from North Park out of San Diego. Uh, awesome. 
And it's a collaboration with, uh, yeah, for sure. Collaboration with other half. It's a daydream state of mind. It's an, uh, double dry hopped Imperial oat cream IPA. So, nice. Um, it's and got it's a little bit heavy. of lactose. <laughs> like it, it felt physically heavier than any can I've, <laughs> it's got some heft to it. I don't know what they put in this. Probably a lot Thank of mango. Mm. That looks good. <laughs> nice light <laughs> color. <laughs> Have you hit it yet? Hmm? What do you think? Oh, man. I'm thinking I like the uh, the three by three a little bit better, but this one is uh, it's opening up. It's warming up a little bit still. Um, is that another dime? Jimmy's on fire tonight. Uh, another yeah, another dude. dime. Yeah, your octane, dude. Another ten percent. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, no, He's got no. slow internet right now. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> a little slow he, came on the he, he came to play tonight. Uh, eight and a half percent. <laughs> okay. Okay. There double IPI. Yeah, it's really, it's really nice. Oh, yeah. It's did really you say well which done. hops were in that? Um, I did not, but I can check. Let's see. What we got here. Uh, I know David wants to know which hops are in it. That's why I'm asking. He's yeah, like, he was. Yeah. He was going to guess Idaho <laughs> 7. Good news. <laughs> Idaho 7, he got it right. And there's Citra, Strata, and uh, Nectaron. So that's a kind of a cool combination. Nectaron's a really good one, too. That's like a newer yeah. one. I think it's from New Zealand. Um, it's definitely different um, in a good way. It's You know, it's a nice change up. So. I'm, I'm, I'm making nice. sure I'm taking, I'm taking notes. <laughs> oh, yeah, which man. one did you open again? Ghost I opened that. That ghost diamonds. Okay. Parish and Parish other half yeah. collaboration. Oh. Oh. Dude, this that's the third other half collaboration on this on this one episode. Yeah, you know what? You're right. I had that, that, yeah, because uh, yours was yours was Jimmy's is and and then that one too. Yeah, yeah. They just released their tenth anniversary case. Yeah, other half oh, is a yeah, big name, so it's like oh. they they do collaborations with everybody. They're kind of. They're one of the OGs that started doing like really good stuff before anybody else. Are are we getting any of that other half uh, anniversary? Jimmy's working remember. on it. Okay, cool. Because I don't want to get like a whole case of it, but yeah, yeah. They, there's an option to get a whole case that includes those triples, um, but it's a lot of beer. <laughs> so I I'll see what I can grab. Yeah, good man. I mean, you've got great trade bait, so I'd be surprised if you couldn't. Yeah, I'm going to throw Hello. in some mics, uh, and that'll just seal the fucking deal. <laughs> yeah. Mike's Hard Lemonade <laughs> with mango or whatever. Uh, anniversary edition. You, you're going right, right, to right. sweep the leg with that stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> Name your price, dude. Oh, my God. Uh, you guys are animals. So I've known about this guy for a long time, um, but you introduced me to him, David, like many, yeah. many, many, many years ago, and he's never yeah. been on the show, so I'm stuck. You shared something from him. Yeah. So um, again, you know, I was digging into my bag, and you know, another reason why, um, you know, I, I brought this up was um, I brought up uh, Tony, uh, Tony Spencer's work because uh, this is one of the guys that um, I had mentioned to Eric a long time ago. Um, you know, Eric and his early days and, you know, he's asking, you know, what guys influenced me and guys that I really followed their work and, and that. My kind of early thing. days were like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is even longer than that. But um, yeah, Anthony or Tony, Tony Spencer um, from the UK. I mean, great guy. I've had the opportunity to meet him and um, his work is just, man, like on another level, I think for me, I think he was one of the guys early, early on that I just studied studying his work in terms of uh, composition and really um, how he puts, you know, scenes together. And it took me, you know, years to kind of really get it. But man, again, you, you know, just compositional wise and then his processing is, you know, nice and clean and Again, more understated, which I appreciate, but it, it just his work is just it's just on another level, and you don't really see a whole lot from him. Very seldom do you see something new from him. But you know, with this image here, um, again, it's the you know the hard contrast within the scene. But 
just the the reflections of how it just takes you into the scene and your eye is just bouncing back and forth just from start to finish is just again composition you know he he has it he he knows what he's looking for it's very deliberate and again you can just tell um with his work i think this image here might fly over a lot of people's heads but mm -hmm. really break it down and really you know look at it it's it's really really well done and really well put together yeah and just how he threw in that like really uh red like tundra in the foreground yep. too is really nice yes. to complete yes. it yes and it's it's really cool because it's a it's a it's a playoff of warm and cool and that never again, gets old yeah it never gets old and just like again just the the visual flow from it like i mean you can just like bounce back and forth from each edge of the frame into the background which you don't really you don't really see this a whole whole lot but with this image i i think that um man he just just was in in his bag on this one in terms of the composition this is, i think this is really well seen and um the balance like you know just the balance of everything just just really works yeah, and he had another yeah, really the, great like uh iceberg type image from greenland that won an award or was recognized Ooh. like in the international landscape photography awards and i think also the natural landscape awards that was so clean that that you know, shot you is know like... what i'm talking about i can't remember which competition it was but i was happy yeah. for that because i knew like more people would find his work because i had never heard like anybody talk about him besides david no and nobody his stuff is really talks great about, nobody yeah. talks about tony man he's he's a solid dude super cool like i'm pretty you know i'm 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 a go after it kind of guy, but tony's like on another level man just the stories that i heard about this guy like he's he's insane um I'll get to another story when um, we get to another one of my picks about um, about Tony when I was telling him about his work. But yeah, he um, man, he's he's just he's just so good and just really well thought out. And um, again, I found his work years and years ago, like well over ten years ago. I mean, probably now I would say almost fifteen years ago now. And he just continues to get you know get better. Um, and just really just really great imagery he has a lot of a lot of really great aerial images too oh, yeah for sure yeah Dude, his, his aerial stuff is just like wow Ooh, it is wow it's so good and he's he's all over the place he's yeah. all over the place to um, american you west <laughs> yeah you don't yeah. yeah you don't really hear a lot about tony like at all he doesn't he rarely posts on social media like very 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 seldom once in a while but man he's um damn his work is it's it's really special really special. Is he full-time um professional photographer or so that's the thing it's 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 hard to say because you don't we don't hear from him you know what i mean um yeah i've known i know a couple people that have taken some workshops with him um but you know they from what I, they said that they said he was full time like he does this full time so but cool. i don't know you just you, we don't see a lot from him you, you know yeah it might be doing like gallery media. exhibitions or like more stuff like right. in person rather than yeah on social who media or yeah who knows who knows but man tony's work is he's 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 a business he's, he, he has dude it. that's a really good pick i mean he's yeah He's got stuff. Yellowstone stuff is fantastic. Crazy. Siberia, Crazy. Greenland, Iceland. I mean, this yeah. guy is all over the place, man. Yeah, he's uh, he gets around quite a bit, um, but really, really, really nice work. He's uh, yeah, he's oof, yeah, great pick. Hey, yeah, can well, I make a? The, Sorry, I was going to say that the the flow in this one is really pretty remarkable. It's just yes, you know, when you go from that lower right, that curving yes. arc from the grass is then flowing yep. into the water. You know, yeah, exactly. Well, and I, and exactly. I love the the contrast of the shapes too. That's the thing that's kind yep. of right. so makes this image so engaging to me. Is you you know, like you pointed yep. out, Jimmy, you get those kind of softer, rounder sort of shapes. Yeah, you know, in mm -hmm. the foreground, and then it jumps to these like jagged uh icebergs that you know that i don't know i think that yeah. kind of 
juxtaposition of the very different shapes really makes makes the image so engaging because yeah. i'm sitting there looking at it trying to figure out why i'm so drawn in by it you know yeah. um mm-hmm. and, and I, I think that's it you know in addition to the things that you guys said too of course the the color contrast and all that but i think his use of shape as a compositional element is really important in this image and yeah. really tastefully done so yeah and i and i and and i will say like like he probably has better images in this right for sure but for me it's more about you know bringing something different you know in terms of you know composition and the you know the right. overall look and feel of a of the scene so you know just kind of stepping outside of the box and just looking at stuff a little bit more a little bit more deeply and then and, instead of looking at it as you know at face value at the surface does it wow me right 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 so um you know, again, it's one of those scenes where it really makes you just study all the details, you know, in there. Like, I mean, even like the little, the longer exposure of the uh, little pieces of ice, you know, floating, floating by mm. those little, those little details make, you know, make a huge difference. And yeah, it's a, uh, it's a really cool scene. Well, that's mm-hmm. something that throws me off here. Like the foreground kind of implies that it's like a smaller scene, but then those yep. ice chunks, they could be like, you know, like little pieces of glacier, like uh, Jokul Sarlan in Iceland, or they could be like icebergs. Like I don't, I don't really know what the scale is. Like, are those farther away than they look, or yeah, hard to tell. Yeah. Yes. The path, yeah. The path yeah. lines up really good. Yeah, it does. And it, and again, whoever's watching this, if you want to see some really, really, really cool iceberg images, go to Tony's website. He has like some of the sickest iceberg images that I've seen. Um, just really graphic and, and prolific and, you know, how he's captured them and how they're processed. Hey, Mike. Yeah, dude. Take, take note, my man. You're heading there. Where? Oh, yeah. Greenland. Yeah, for sure. Greenland. Yeah, he's got some stuff, bro. Get, do yeah. a deep dive into that portfolio. Yeah. Oh, I'm definitely going to be doing that for sure. And What's the up? cool thing, And the cool thing that I like about his, like, <clears throat> what his Greenland stuff is – like oh, that you don't, kind of don't see from some of the other people that you know will post images from there but with icebergs you know a lot of times people make the icebergs like super blue and super saturated um tony stuff and again i don't know if it's intentional or it's how he's captured in the camera i don't know but they the scenes are like very monochromatic yeah, so more neutral. It, yeah more neutral and it gives it a little bit more a little bit more drama makes it a little bit more dramatic and um it's just super, super, super cool in how those scenes look. And Paul's over here, like putting together a model airplane on his desk, and Mikey's drinking his big dumb water bottle with the fucking ice cubes jingling around, like <laughs> jingling around. Do you guys, like, do you guys get super close. dehydrated when you fly and travel? I don't know. There's something like anytime I'm on a plane, I'm always like feel super dehydrated afterwards. So I'm trying to rectify that because I'm. Well, you should drink warm water, not cold water. You'll hydrate way quicker. So I got a I got a pro tip here. I'll take the ice out. <laughs> This uh, <laughs> this diamond ghost, it has a little bit of a better finish on it. But if you, with as with a lot of these uh, hazy IPAs, you let this baby warm up just a little bit. Man, it's good. Juicy. It gnaws it out. It's just juicy. It just takes that edge off the end. Man, I'm just yeah. enjoying this thing. Come on. <laughs> nice. I'm excited to try that one. It's still a little green. It's only like two weeks old. I was gonna wait till next week. Oh yeah, it, you're you're gonna like it, especially when it warms up a little bit. Yeah, that's when like a lot of the fruity stuff comes out. So if you drink it cold, like you get a lot of the pine or like the the bite, yep. but you don't get like the fruity stuff yet. No question. David knows it's a oh baby Charlie. Oh wow, legend. Charlie. Charlie. So um, Charles, um, he was man. You know, I don't even know where to, where to even begin. So. Um, Again, I think this is another guy I think that I introduced Eric to early on um, with, you know, shooting four scenes and Charlie has some of the best um, four scenes out there. I mean, like you guys, I, I know um, he was a pick on your your last show of I think Alex had picked up one of his mm-hmm. images and, um, you know, if you want to get into shooting trees, I mean, and you want to study people's work. Um, Charlie's it. Mr. Kramer has it. And um, 
this this particular scene here, um, I like it for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I always like seeing scenes that have like a sense of movement without actual quote unquote movement, right? Right. The movement Static, is actually is that motion yeah, feeling. Right. So the movement is in the subject, which like this is you don't see this a lot and usually it's kind of challenging to put it together but he composed this like just just right so beautifully done um like just wow right but the second thing and one of the things that i look for in my forest scenes and um especially when i'm shooting like fall colors is i always like to try to find like a solid background and eric and i have talked about this before where i like to have uh, like a wall of foliage in the background and it brings everything in the foreground to the front and what's so cool about this scene is that the aspens are are bare right so you get to see the complete tree structure um the character of the tree we get to see the movement in the tree we get to see all of that but it's enhanced because of the background is you know pretty much solid and it brings everything in the foreground up to the front um the little splashes of um that sage in the, you know, that sage green in the foreground mm -hmm. from, um, from all the little brush, um, consensual um, look of the uh, Eastern Sierra, um, their aspen groves. Um, this gives me that feel and vibe. Um, I've always struggled shooting, you know, aspen scenes like this in the Sierra because it, they're super chaotic. And it's really busy and it's hard to get that separation here it is, you know, a guy that shoots trees all the time just made, you know, made this particular image just look so nice and so clean. And I don't know if it was, you know, easy for him or not, but um, it makes it look like really cool. And <laughs> I kind of wish I had something like this for myself. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm um, totally vibing off of this. And, you know, one of the early, early, early Aspen scenes that um, that I really liked. And the other thing, too um was shooting multiple aspen groves in the sierra um these baby aspen i call them baby aspen because they're not like the you know full-grown big daddies that you see like in you know utah colorado. And, and colorado um these are way harder to shoot just like they're really 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 challenging and to try to make sense of what you're seeing is it's it's hard so you know again off of experience and then seeing this is you know uh, makes the, the image um, special for me. So, yeah, I really enjoy this image quite a bit. It is a master. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it's it, it's almost like literally perfect <laughs> Yeah. For, for what it is. I mean, it's just so well-framed. The background yeah. is amazing, makes it all pop. And... Yeah, I kind of got yeah. an idea of where this <clears throat> is at, and I've wandered, if this is the area where I think it's at, I've wandered through this grove, I can't even tell you, can't, countless times because the trees in there are so cool i mean like they're awesome and i could never find i would never be able to find anything remotely even close to this like i just like you know it's just like you're just walking and you're just like god all of this stuff looks the same but to you know photograph this in you know low soft light um and get that separation without any kind of atmosphere or anything like that really shows you know that this is a guy that um, really knows what he's doing in the field. I think yeah, so. the the character of those trees and then that backdrop and the separation. Yeah. You don't you don't see this a lot, and it's mm. it's 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 a different look. And man, it is so killer. And the yeah. the it. timing in itself is is right. really exceptional because. These, the, you know, these foreground trees that we're focusing on have have yeah. dropped their leaves, but the dudes in the back have not. Yes. You know? Yeah, they're like peak. Like, good yep. luck on getting that to repeat. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, you know, the other thing, too, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about, um, you know, these um, scenes not being perfect. Um, you know, this to me, it gives me that that sense of wildness. Right. And I as I mature as a photographer, that wildness starts to become a little bit more appealing to me so it's not necessarily the quote unquote cleanest scene but it's wild it's chaotic and it feels like i said it just feels like like really like you're just in the bush in the thick of things and yeah um, yeah but it feels really, like natural I, and organic that's what i like about yeah, that kind of stuff yeah it's exactly. not like all like perfectly uh like manicured and like 
you know, it, it doesn't feel like a park or anything like that. Like it just feels very natural sure. and wild and untamed. Yes. And I like that, you know, and I'm starting to get a little bit more into that. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why I'm enjoying like my work from Columbia, because it's like that it's wild. Yeah. You know, it, it gives you that sense of just being in the forest and just in the thick of things. And, you know, you really have to kind of look and, and move a certain kind of way to just make stuff make sense and, and organize all this chaos that you're seeing. So um, when I see stuff like this, I'm just like, yeah, this, this is, this is, this is it right here. So yeah. it's, it's interesting because th that topic has come up now, I think in a couple of different episodes, how it almost seems like there's this movement towards exactly what you were talking about there, David, where yeah. like, it's like photographers were kind of taking, you know, taking our foot off the gas pedal when it comes to like the perfection and the sterilized scenes. And we're starting to accept the kind of wildness and, and, yeah. and, you know, that sort of thing. And, you know, I mean, I think a lot of us, like, we make our photographs kind of for other photographers. In other words, like the yep. general population isn't going to notice 95% of the shit that we notice and we agonize over. Sure. And, uh, you know, I think we, we kind of cause ourselves a lot of, you know, consternation trying to like find scenes and make them perfect. And we even, I, I mean, I do this all the time. Like I get rid of scenes that would otherwise be, or images that would otherwise be really good because there's some little imperfection that I can't fix. And, Personally, after having discussed it on the show a couple of times, I'm starting to get away from that, thankfully, which is a good thing. And it just keeps coming up over and over again. And I think it's a great trend that we're starting to see. Now, obviously, this image was, you know, in 2002, it looks like. So um, Charles way ahead of the curve on that, right? But yeah, right. Um, but it's not. But yeah, it's not just I, I like, love that. It's not just like allowing for imperfection. It's like also like consciously like working with the imperfections so that the imperfections don't detract from the image at all because obviously yeah. like a lot of the scenes can potentially be very distracting and, and throw the whole thing off or draw the eye more than the subject does unwantedly so like mm -hmm. there's also like a certain amount of skill that it takes to be able to work with those imperfections instead of just being like oh i can just clone that out later on or i can just warp this out or like you know being like okay if i'm not going to get rid of this how can i make it work right. you know if it's going to stay like what can i do to keep it there and not have it diminish the scene in any way. And I think it just comes from like, when we first get into photography, we're looking for those like perfect postcard type scenes, like trying to find like, you know, the exceptional stuff, like the extraordinary things rather than like finding the extraordinary within the ordinary. And so like, right. as your relationship deepens with nature, as you spend more time, you start having this desire to show nature as it actually is like how it actually looks on a day to day basis and not just like the miraculous hallelujah moments that hardly ever happen. Right. And so uh, I think that's what it is just like as you connect with it more, instead of hoping for it to be a certain way or like only photographing certain sides of it, you learn to embrace like every side of it and every characteristic and you learn to love like every aspect of it. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think mm -hmm. that um... I think for me, um, you know, I had already kind of been, you know, had this mindset, out, you know, a while ago. And I think Eric and I have talked about this, you know, quite a few times um, in the past when we talk about shooting, you know, these forest scenes. But um, I think the really, you know, again, the, the wide awakening for me was um, not last year, but the previous year when I was in Columbia and you see these scenes and there is a lot of chaos there and then you snore a huge line of coke and everything is just like perfect <laughs> <laughs> say hello to my friends come on <laughs> yo, yo, um, but um it only took was, an hour and a half <laughs> yeah right um when i was there um i started being like okay you have to completely change your mindset because you know, again, we go to Colorado and we have all these nice linear lines. Everything's nice and neat for Almost us. Almost too perfect right? sometimes. Like, I'm right, like, where right, are some right. fucked up trees? Like everything's perfectly right. straight and unblemished. And then when I get I get into the jungle out there in Columbia, I'm just like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you're just you're sitting Part of over darkness. there. <laughs> yeah, you're sitting there and everything is so cool, and you're just like, wow. And then you got just plant species all over the place. So, you know, you're trying to, yeah. you know, organize all of this stuff. But 
um, it started becoming a lot more apparent then. And then, you know, my last visit, I was just like, man, this is like super wild, but I liked it. And it was also for me personally, just as a, you know, as a photographer that wants to continue to grow, um, those challenges were great for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those were good challenges. Um, same with the Netherlands. It was the same thing. You have all this chaos, you know, and then you're like, okay, how do I figure this out? You go to Sweden, it's the mm -hmm. same thing. So, you know, you're, you're completely switching up the landscape. You're dealing with different elements. You're dealing with different um, trees and that kind of thing. And um, yeah. just those experiences, I think, have made me a little bit better in, you know, photographing these scenes and um, just really, you know, I'm, I look forward for that, for that challenge when I get out into the field for stuff like this. I feel like That's the cool. modern human being has such a distorted mental image of nature to begin with that like when you first get into photography you first get into like because even if you're like out camping and stuff if, if you're not photographing stuff you're not paying a whole lot of attention to how it looks like in terms of visual aesthetics so when you first get into photography you're trying to find photographs like scenes that match your mental image which to begin with is distorted and not realistic and so then once you like stop trying to find scenes that you picture in your head that's when you really start to embrace nature as it actually is. And then you, you know, you're, you're working with what you find instead of trying to find stuff that matches something that's like not realistic to begin with. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Totally. That's a great point. Totally see that. And um, I think too, with like, with this, like, this is a, a good example of um, somebody that's very, you know, matured in his, in his, in his craft and that you know just somebody you know regular just wouldn't be able to go and you know photograph something like this and make it look this good mm -hmm. yeah definitely, definitely agree definitely agree yeah, like managing like managing the chaos within the image and keep it looking clean still yeah i mean think right. about that this is this is from 2002 i mean like that's so crazy yes yeah, this is, this like, is that's crazy that doesn't seem like that's that long ago, but dude, that's a 22 long years time. ago. Like, that's dude, long that's ago. insane. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a great so, point. Yeah. So, I mean, again, this is a guy that knows what he's doing. And, um, you know, obviously it shows what, you know, throughout his whole portfolio of images, but man, it's just like on another level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's hints of uh, Elliot Porter in here too. It's, it's, could, you know, I could totally it's, see it's, that. It's definitely yeah, totally Charlie Kramer, that. but it's mm -hmm. yeah, I can see. Yeah, I could totally yeah. see that. This is crazy though. Two thousand and two. So mm. crazy. I, I say that with Bill Neal stuff a lot. Like yeah. what? Oh, yeah, that was eighty like five. Yeah, Dude, right. great, great pick. I love this image. Oh. Dude, yeah, so, Bert. Yeah, yeah, this Kane. this this fucking image right here is yeah. so good. Mm. And I had a. It is so funny. So. You know, Kane and I have gone back years. In fact, um, I'll even I'll even go back even further. So, uh, Kane and Guy Tall uh, were the first images that I had seen of the Hanksville area, um, way before we were into you know Instagram, Facebook, all of this, all of this shit. Like this is years and years and years and years ago. And Kane was one of the first guys that I had seen photograph this area. When I got into Kane's work, once I started diving in and looking at more stuff, Kane's work was one of the first people that I seen of a huge, you know, body of work from Colorado on the aspen trees. And his work, single-handedly, besides Jimmy, which you know I've, I've told Eric about in the past Jimmy too, Dickens. you know. Yeah, um, those two guys single handedly inspired me to go to Colorado um, to see that stuff for myself. So this is Dayton, you know, like I said, almost 15 years ago now. Kane and I have become, you know, pretty cool over the years. Um, he's he's the one that helped me transition into the whole mirrorless system and, you know, just getting advice from him and, and that kind of thing. And um you know he's tossed some images off of me for some critique and that kind of thing and Kane has just been solid um you know all through the years and just a really great guy and I love his work Kane's work is 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 great um he was telling me that he was going up to Alaska and the Yukon or wherever it was at somewhere over there the Yukon 
um, to do some work last last year. And um, I hadn't heard from him for a little bit. And then he got back and was like, hey, man, um, I got some new images. That I, I just want to, you know, share with you just, you know, some aerial stuff. And he was like, he was saying that he wasn't really sure about the images, you know, because he was saying that the light wasn't, you know, ideal and wasn't what it was expecting. And they had this real small window of time where they can get up and, and you know, and make these images because, you know, it's, you know, you're in the Yukon, you know, it's you know, hit mm -hmm. and miss with the light, right? But he was like, yeah, you know, I made a handful of images in, you know, like less than an hour window of, of, of time flying. And when he showed me the images, I was blown away. And just again, it goes back to, you know, what I've been saying this whole time is just something different, right? To me, this, is, this isn't like a, a regular aerial image. Um, so well composed, repeating patterns all throughout the scene. Like, I mean, just shape triangle after triangle after triangle all through the scene. And I had a really hard time picking, you know, one of my favorites from, you know, the little set that he had from here. But man, I mean, this to me is just right. Nicely processed, um, you know, monochromatic. Um, you're using, you know, highlights and shadows to create your depth. Um, his, his snow and the shadows isn't like this deep uh, cyan or deep blue. Um, a hint of blue, but just right. Um, mm -hmm. Contrast fades out in the background, um, creating more depth within the scene. I mean, I mean, I can just go on, but this is just a really, really, really well put together scene. Kind of got this, that like um, golden spiral sort of composition to it, you know, that kind of yeah. that arch of that uh, mountain ridge line, kind of the way it pulls you in yeah. and wraps around. Yeah, it's it's so incredible. I mean, this is such a perfect mountain aerial image. I mean, I don't know if I've seen anything better. It's so good. I mean, the depth, the way he processed it. Yeah, you got the the light. Everything here is just man. It's on point. It's fantastic. Yeah, it is Super really classy. really good. Yeah, the sky treatment definitely accentuates yeah. all the angles. And, you know. It's so crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Dude, I'm so glad you 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 you, you featured this. It is, yeah. man, this is good. Yeah, and Kane just has he, Kane just has really good work, and you know, again, he's got a ton of just, good shit on his website. Just, yeah. just you know, really thoughtful. Um, again, like you were mentioning in the sky, um, you know, the sky is more gray. It's not blue, right? So a lot of times, people have the tendency to go more saturated with the sky instead of doing the latter, which he did here, you know, and it's more gray, it's more neutral. And again, that feels natural to me. Just, it feels natural. And again, right. you just have all this crazy amount of depth and all these repeating patterns that you just, you can just, like your eye just flows right through the scene so smoothly. There's no hangups. It's just, everything is just right, you know, for me in this image. It's, it's great. That peak in the background is nice too, and that's a little yeah. kind of you know, nugget that right. you discover. Yeah, yeah. Kind of pulls you, kind of pulls yeah. you to that back corner too, just to balance things out. Yeah, yeah, it's so good, man. I just, yeah, Kane, he rocked this one, and I had a really hard time trying to, who, trying to pick one from here. I mean, you know, again, um, you know, just trying to dig into the bag, and you know, just some of the guys that inspire me, and um, you know, bring something different to the table, and you know, I'm, I'm all about that. Oh, yeah, I featured one of his images in our fall great showcase shows. episode last year. So I'm glad you featured another one of his images because he's a great photographer. Yeah, that, uh, there's awesome. that suggestion of the peak at the lower left third. Yes. The shadow. Yes. Like, God, yeah, the shadow. Just, on there, like, triangle. just what is over on the other side of that? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly. Damn. So, you know, there's like that little sense of mystery, like, you know, what's yep. over there? Just. Mm -hmm. there's something else there what's there but that's this these are the kind of scenes here that again make you explore it makes you you know dive into all the little details and the little nuances within the scene um again that hint of mystery like oh what's what's over there you know is it something big is it small you know who mm -hmm. knows but god it's just it's just so cool yeah mm -hmm. he's got some amazing geology images i mean like 
the geology in this picture is just insane. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Uh, this, uh, this crazy it's stuff. Like repeating man. theme in his work. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, King can shoot. He's uh, he's 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 one of he's, it's a real he's deal. One my, he's one of my favorites, man. He can. Um, King got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's he had it for, and he's had yeah. it for a very, very, very long time. A very long time. Yeah, and um, and the other thing that I appreciate about Kane too, just as a person, like he's just you know he's a great guy, but he's also, mm -hmm. you know, as good as he is, he's still willing to reach out for help or willing to learn you know certain things, and I I I appreciate that you know quite a bit, and I think that's a, um, you know a pretty you know motivating thing as you know as an artist myself just trying to you know learn different stuff and it's it's good to see that a guy as good as he is still you know reaches out for you know um you know reaches out for advice and that kind of thing yeah that's yeah, a really that, that's a really good that's a really good point it's really cool yeah i like that totally digging that <laughs> CW Cecil C -dub. Ah. yeah so so the reason why I pick Cecil I mean I mean we call him old man from the badlands um, <laughs> I wonder why yeah old man from the badlands now I, I will say this I, I had a really really hard time you know picking out an image from Cecil because like all of his stuff is he has like a million fucking images he has like a million images and all of his shit is is pretty cool. Um, I'll start off with this. Um, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for Cecil. Um, every artist that I've known or have um, close friends that I've gotten into, I have suggested Cecil's work. Um, Eric will tell you that I you know, I've been following Cecil before anybody even knew who Cecil was, and they probably, you know, probably didn't even know about Cecil until I mentioned it and they heard about him somewhere. Um, Cecil really helped me with all of the stuff that I have going on in terms of um, my processing, you know, how I, you know, look at the landscape, um, looking at a uh, color cast within an, within an image, you know, color separation, you know, all of that. He he he's the one that got me to where I'm at now. Uh, to be quite honest with you, and I think that it's really important for me um, to really mention him in my journey um, because, like I said, if it wasn't for him, I would be nowhere even remotely close. If it wasn't for him, now he didn't. Give me the special sauce, you know. It never gave me, you know, um, the how tos or anything like that. But what he did do is he opened my mind to um, look and study and um, be um, mindful of how I process how I look at the scenes, what, you know, to look for certain things and, and even the type of light that, you know, that I shoot in, um, he's the one that opened my eyes to all of that. And again, this is going on probably, like I said, probably a good, like I said, 15 years ago now. So um, I owe a lot to Cecil in so many ways. And, you know, I think it was only right for me to uh, mention him here. Um, the reason why I picked this particular image because it has all the stuff that he um, mentioned to me in our correspondence going back and forth, you know, for the longest time. And even, you know, the, the handful of times that I had the opportunity to meet him and, you know, got to pick his brain when we were in the field. But um, soft light. Um, you, people hear me talking about soft light all the time. So if you're shooting Badlands or the desert in general, soft light is your best friend. And this is this image here is the perfect example of why it is your best friend. But when you say um, that, you mean like soft, like reflected light, right? Like twilight and stuff, not like diffused. Yeah, not much. diffused. You want that nice, clean, glowy, clean, clean light, glowy light. When the sun is before, when the sun is down or before it comes up, 
Um, that's the type of light you, you want. If you go on my website, like literally 95% of my images are made in this type of light. And there's a reason why. Um, you got to shoot off, it in the right way too, though, to be able to accentuate yeah, it. Yeah, that's true too. Um, but first thing, color cast. I, you know, I've been talking about color cast for years now. And it, I, you know, I live by that. Those color casts make a huge, huge, huge difference. And especially when you're shooting, you know, the desert landscape, everything is brown or red or orange. If you have reflected light from the sky, you know, it, it, the landscape is going to take on that color, um, which is natural, right? But it's how we manage it in post what makes a huge difference. Um, with this particular image here, you can see that the light is nice and even, it's nice and soft. Um, you have that color separation throughout the scene. Brown rocks against that cool, it's not actually white, kind of like a cream, cream color. Sometimes some areas are gone, take on a little bit of blue, but you don't see any yellow or brown throughout the scene. Mm -hmm. If you have that color cache, you're not going to be able to get that color separation. You can obviously hear that he has the uh, the flowers in there and there's a little bit of rabbit brush in there. Um, if you have that color cache, you're not going to be able to see that. So it's really important to correct that color cast early on before you even go to the other you know, parts of the processing. And with this image here, he's done that, which he does with all of his images. He's correcting the color cast. So, Again, you can see that there's nice color separation um, within the uh, within the scene. No hard color cache. You have warm and cools working against each other, which is awesome. Now, the last thing, uh, composition. These That's Badlands, what I was say. yeah, the Badlands itself. I mean, if you've been to some of these Badlands areas, you know, in New Mexico and some in Arizona, um, they are hard to shoot. It is hard to organize these scenes to make them make sense like you see here in this particular image but looking at cecil's work the thousands of images that he has there's a, a reoccurring theme in you know the majority of his images and you have to have something in the in the center of the frame to really get stuff going right and whether it be in the center of the frame or you're taking something in, in the thirds, you know, the left or right third, you need mm -hmm. something for your eye to go to right away. Yeah. Um, if you don't, everything just is like a jumble mess and it just gets lost within the chaos. So this scene here is like a really good example of him taking advantage of you know, a very interesting structure within these badlands and then using the elements around it to, you know, work the composition. Um, I've seen Cecil work in the field just, you know, from a distance and Cecil, he moves. He's not one of those guys that's like, you know, refining a composition. He may take a few frames and then he's off to the next. He's, he moves quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But um, to see this particular scene and how he arranged all the interesting stuff and then frame using the, the buttes on the side to frame everything in the middle of the frame is is it's great like i mean you know most people wouldn't be able to do this in this kind of landscape so um with all that being said this is why i pick cecil and um yeah he's a really eclectic guy super artistic he is in the ultimate artist um, yeah. in every in every single way and um like i said i owe so much to him um and again i wouldn't be anywhere remotely close um to where i'm at if it wasn't for cecil so you know this is why i um i chose cecil uh for one of my images yeah as another great photographer i discovered because of you david and for a while he and i were emailing back and forth and i after after this, I'll probably send him an email because just to check in with him because it's been a while. Yep. But um, he would always say like really interesting things in our emails, like little nuggets of wisdom. Yes, like, yes, yes. Yeah, super cool guy. Yes. So, so those so, nuggets of wisdom, Eric, that you know that you got from Cecil through an um, you know, through correspondence, you know, and you know, and emails and whatnot. Um, that's how he would communicate with me so everything was like almost like in code it was like, like you know, sitting over here, like uh, it was parables like a, right 
yeah, it was like these riddles and I'm sitting over there trying to figure this shit out. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'd have to, like, I would There's literally another profit have to, from the desert. No, seriously. Like I would like no bullshit. Like I would have to go back and read Cecil's emails three to four times <laughs> just, to, just to make sure that I was understanding what he was saying. And, you know, he, he, you know, he mentioned like color cast, but it was just wasn't like, like overtly, you know, it was kind of like he kind of glanced over it and then I would have to go do my research on it. And then I was like, oh shit, this makes sense, right? Then, you know, I would talk about, you know, mid-tone contrast and he was like, that's where a lot of your information is at. You know, you don't have to do all this extra stuff, right? If you work your mid-tones, everything is just gonna come together, you know, naturally, right? So, you know, that was like another thing that I had to, you know, I had to learn on my own, but, you know, it was just him mentioning it. And again, didn't overemphasize it, but, you know, just taking that extra initiative to do my own homework and my own research. And then I would come back to him and be like, hey, you know, like months later, hey, you know, I kind of figured this out, um, you know, what are your thoughts on this? And then he would give me a whole nother set of riddles and nuggets that I had to, you know, <laughs> you know, try to decipher. And then another three or four months later, I'd come back to him and ask him something else. And, um, you know, it started, it started clicking, it started clicking. And then, again, if you look at, like I said, the majority of Cecil's work, it's all low soft light, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it, it started clicking and started making sense. When I figured that out, that was it. Photography went to, a whole nother, <laughs> went to a whole nother level. So, um, yeah, I just, Cecil's, he's the man. Um, he, uh, man, old man from the Badlands. That's, yeah. that's that's Yoda. Yoda from the hoodoos. Yeah, man. He's, um, you know, and that's all he shoots. That's, that's all he's like, that's it. Um, Badlands National Park. Nobody knew who Badlands National Park, what that was. Nobody even went there. Cecil, first guy that I've seen bring back images from that place. Hmm. First person. Now you got people like Mikey Dimiola running over there trying to comp stop his shit. And... <laughs> but nobody knew about that. <laughs> no nobody, nobody knew about that. Look, so I was telling you, uh, I was going to tell you a story about Tony, Tony Spencer. So when I met Tony, I met him out here, like I said, years ago. I mean, like I said, this is over 10 years ago. I met him over in Valley of Fire. We were hanging out, we were talking and stuff. And I was like, hey, he was asking me about, you know, some of my desert stuff. And I had, um, I think it was my first trip to Bistai. And he was asking me about it because he said he had liked the images. So I was, you know, giving him some information about it. And I said, hey, I said, you know what? I said, Who, this is the person that you need to, you need to go look at. Go look at Cecil's stuff. And he goes and look at Cecil stuff. He sends me an email. Tony sends me an email. I was like, dude, dude. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> now, mind you, I met him. I met him out here at Valley of Fire, right? So this is just outside of Vegas. So he sends me an email, like literally that same night, and was like, "Yo, dude. he's like, dude." He goes, he goes. Do you think I can drive from here to New Mexico in the next, like, you know? 24 hours and get some good shots from there. I was like, dude, I go like Mexico goes like it's like eight, nine hours from here. And he was like, he was like, no, he goes, I know. He goes, but he was like, do you think it'd be worth doing the drive? I was like, I'm thinking to myself, I couldn't even respond to him right away. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Like I met you, I was talking to, I'm talking to Tony at 4:30 in the afternoon, he's sending me an email at like nine o'clock at night and then asking me if he should go to New Mexico <laughs> within the next two hours so he can make it like there before like, sunrise. Like, I was like, dude, what can't the wait. fuck is wrong with this dude? I was like, dude, you're crazy. <laughs> you are fucking crazy. And the, and, the, and the funny thing about it, he did it. He ended oh, up going. Shit. He oh, ended shit. Up going. He ends <laughs> up going and he sends me an email like a couple days later and was like, dude, he goes, New Mexico was insane. He goes, I'm coming back. He he was that hooked. And ever since then, I was inspired. Dude, I told him about Cecil's work and he just went fucking nuts. He went fucking crazy <laughs> after seeing Cecil's stuff. And he did That's it. That's so he, cool. He went out there for like he went out there for like for a, one day. He drove from Las Vegas 
all the way to northern New Mexico for one day of shooting. <laughs> And then back. Dude, I'm so glad you saved that story and freaking Dude, threw it, it was, in. Yeah, That's it so beautiful. sick. It was That's so, so badass. It was so crazy. I was like, "Dude, you're fucking crazy." So then, <laughs> so so it was funny. So, you know, I was, um, you know, so uh, you know, like a year or two goes by, and then, uh, you know, my buddy Miles, um, he took a workshop with Tony up in uh, Norway. And they were going to do like the, you know, Lofoten and all that, you know, stuff up that way. And they were going to go do Aurora and stuff. It's in the wintertime, right? So um, he, so, so Miles calls me up. He's like, he's like, dude, and he's out there. He's out there in Lofoten. And he goes, dude, I go, cause I'm asking him, yo, how's the trip going? What's going on? He's like, man, he goes, this Miles trip Morgan. so, yeah. He's like, dude, this is so crazy. I go, I go, what happened? He's like, he's like, dude. He was like, Tony, Tony is fucking crazy. I go, I go, what do you mean? <laughs> he goes, dude, we drove from Norway to like Russia just to shoot the Aurora. I go, and I'm and in my head, I'm thinking like Norway, Russia. I go, I know it's kind of close, a boat. <laughs> but I'm like, it's close, but not that close. And he was like, dude, he goes, we drove from like, he was like, he was like, I don't even know where we are. He was like, we're over by Russia or something like that. But he was like, dude, it was like eight hours away. And he drove and he was fine with it. <laughs> he was totally cool with it. Drove from Norway over to wherever the hell they're at, Scandinavia, Russia, whatever the hell is up there, just to shoot Aurora. And he goes, we shot the Aurora. He goes, dude, we got, you know, sick light, you know, it was perfect, amazing conditions. He goes, we shot for like, I don't know, maybe like two, you know, two, three hours is done. And he goes, okay, let's go. Let's go back to, we'll go back to Norway. And he's like, <laughs> Miles is a pilot. This is a guy that's used to not getting any sleep. Yeah, crew rest, right? <laughs> right. He's not used to getting any sleep. And he was like, dude, I could even barely keep my eyes open after shooting and driving, you know, eight, nine hours away. And then Tony was like, okay, let's go back to Norway afterwards. And he was just like looking at him like, God, I hope we survive the drive home. Cause like, this is not like around the corner type shit. So, like eight <laughs> hours away. so yeah. Um, he, Tony is like that. That's what I'm saying. Tony will get after he has no shame at all. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. So. So yeah, so, so good, you know, so I, you know, I had to throw that in there. Tony and Cecil, um, like I said, both incredible guys. Like I said, Cecil, that's my guy. Um, like I said, I owe so much to that guy in, in so many ways and, um, you know, forever grateful for everything that he's done. And I mean, to be quite honest with you, um, he, again, he changed, he changed my photography, but he also, um, you know, change how I look at the landscape. And I, I don't, I don't think that I would be where I'm at now if it wasn't for meeting Cecil. So yeah, um, I, I, I owe him quite a bit. Are you on his website right now, Mikey? I am. So you're browsing through. So Cecil's yeah. work is similar to Hans Strahn's in that. It is. I was like, just about go, to say that reminds me of it. If you go through his portfolio, <laughs> like there's so many compelling remarkable images but they're not light dependent like there's not yes. like crazy sunsets crazy sunrises crazy skies or anything like it's all like really bland ordinary lighting for the most part but it's all very compositionally like dependent. Yeah, like that's that's what makes it engaging the way that he frames everything up so thoughtfully and uh intentionally like his his uh his portfolio is a really great study in composition if anybody wants yep. to uh you know, pick up a few things and see the world differently. And the other thing too, what's, um, <clears throat> what's funny about Hans is, um, I had an opportunity to meet Hans when I was in Sweden guy is, I mean, as you guys know, he's fucking awesome. Like that guy is, he's a <laughs> Did You watch his he episode. Is, oh, dude, I was dying, but Hans, <laughs> he's like, he's a like, savage. Dude, he, okay, so you guys are saying, you guys think he's savage on your show? Meet him in person. This dude, dude, he is, he is no joke. I mean, like, Hans, he was letting loose. Like, I was like, damn, I was like, this guy is no joke. I was like, just like, man, he, you know, he, he's, he's, 
man, I, I have story. I, I wish I could tell you some of the stuff that he was telling me, but I cannot tell, say it on this because <laughs> it was <very> crazy. <laughs> You said in the green room yeah. afterwards. Yeah, well, a little green room time afterwards. Yeah. That was yeah. green room shit. We got was, some hints. <laughs> dude, it was so crazy. Let's just say, um, how can I put this? Um, some of the world known photographers and landscape photography, he had some, some interesting stories about it. Let's just say that. <laughs> like, really well known people. I'll say that. Like, legend type shit um but uh oh, dude, like, Sounds savage, juicy. savage it's gonna be but, a long <laughs> green room tonight uh, but um but yeah so you know i was chopping it up with hans and then you know he's you know we were he's, we were talking about each other's work and stuff and then you know i was like yo you know again we just still got to talk about new mexico and i was like man you know my boy cecil you know he was like he loves cecil he loves cecil mm. and i told him i told him i said you know to be honest with you i go you and Cecil would get along perfect because they're literally just alike, like mm -hmm. literally just alike. And it was so crazy. Like it was like Hans is like the European re European version of Cecil, more mm -hmm. or less. And um, I think, yeah, they're both pretty savage. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> crazy, but yeah, it's pretty wild, but um, but yeah, Hans loves he loves Cecil's work. He loves it, you know. And Hans Makes like sense. he's like, and it was so cool because he was like, yeah, I love that. I uh, love all the Badland stuff. He said because you know Hans likes the the wild, the really wild and chaotic stuff. So yeah. when he was saying that he right. really likes Cecil's stuff, it, it made sense to me because Hans likes that stuff, right? Um, they're both kind of alike, you know, because I was, you know, asking Hans about, you know, how he shoots and, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, he was just like, Hans was like, yo, I only use the mid zoom. He was like, I don't use wide. I don't use telephotos. It's all mid zoom for me. Cecil's pretty much the same way. He doesn't really shoot wide angle stuff. Everything's mid zoom. Like you'll go out there with one lens and that's it. So I thought it was kind of funny that, you know, both of them kind of shoot the same way. And, I, and again, I don't know if it's maybe... Uh, a generational thing with how they originally started off in photography with film. So um, I thought it was really interesting, you know, to see the, you know, the uh, similarities in those two. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah it, for it sure. Is. Seeing their work. This image blew me away oh, when yeah. I saw it the other day. I love Isabel's work and I've been wanting to feature an image of hers for a long time now because she has fantastic stuff and I feel like not a lot of people know about her. Yeah, unfortunately, Isabel, man, man, I don't even God, I don't even really even know where to begin with her work because it's so and again, I had a hard time, you know, choosing, you know, an image, um, you know, well, for one, I'm I love frozen trees like I like I don't have any frozen trees in my in my portfolio. Um, but this is something that I wish I had in so many ways um it's just so beautifully composed and like this is like like the perfect example of how good composition um if you do the composition right in the field like you don't need a, a crazy sky you don't mm -hmm. need all these you know fancy elements to to make the scene you know to make the scene work this is just so well done it's so well processed um perfect space in so much interest you know my eye is just wandering throughout the scene i don't know this well, in, in a way big. like subtler weather conditions and lighting conditions allow you to appreciate the subject matter even more because they're not like sure. distracting at all you know they're not yes. like too loud or anything like in this case the subject matter is so inherently interesting yep the shapes of these frozen trees like yeah, if there's too much going on in the background besides this like nice pastel cool sky with a little bit of warmth on the horizon like it would just take away from it. I feel like you wouldn't be able to appreciate as much. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just it, like everything is just, it's just it just has such a beautiful flow and I, I can just yeah. like look at this all day long. I'm not getting hung up on anything. Um, just super, super, super nice. Um, Isabel's work is 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 again another one of these artists that is just completely overlooked and her work is just so good. It's it's so nice. Um, it's really, really nice. And she, her website is, is nice. You can look at the images and 
um, you know, not get distracted with stuff. It, you know, everything has a nice flow. Um, mm -hmm. I love the way she has her gallery set up. It's, it's really, really, really nice. And, um, I just, I just love her work. I mean, she's great. And I just wish that, um, you know, she had a little bit more exposure because her work is that good. Fantastic. I featured her in one of my newsletters because I always like feature a photographer in every newsletter that I send out. Yeah. Um, the story behind this image is really cool too because she said uh like 15 years ago she lost a loved yeah. one and then she yep. found like um comfort mm -hmm. in a book by erland and orsoila harberg which are these two really great norwegian photographers they used to be married um called lapland the alaska of europe and so like ever since then she'd been inspired by this place and had wanted to make photographs of it because most of her portfolio is like seascapes and stuff in spain like a lot of coastal work really nice intimate coastal work and, and stuff like that, really subtle um, small scenes and things like that. So this was really different. Like when I saw her post this, I was really surprised because like nothing else that she has done before. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that story behind it, it, just how those photographers influenced her to go here and shoot it. Like, I, I think it's really cool to hear that. And I think there's an important thing there because like just if somebody inspires you like give them credit it doesn't yep. diminish your work at all like it doesn't take away from this at all that she was inspired by two other photographers that photographed this place 15 years before her like to mention them or anything like you don't need to be the first one you don't need to have like an original idea it's okay if somebody like influenced you to go and photograph a certain place or photograph in a certain way but give them credit because i think it's cool to you know give credit to one another where it's when it's due and mm -hmm. if anything like it just makes you look even better for admitting it and uh it doesn't diminish the work at all it doesn't take away from it at all and for me it makes it even more meaningful i totally agree so yeah so i i had never i had never heard of her so i just pulled up her instagram and that was the first thing that jumped out at me so this is a recent post <clears throat> like how different you must not be subscribed to my newsletter then man <laughs> oh i, I see, think I you forget to send it to me right Dude, to spam see, Every you see fucking how you time. Did, you see how he did you? Just like literally just threw you under does. the bus and hits me over. all the damn time. He did it to Back himself, up. dude. Yo. <laughs> no love. God, Super easy Eric. to subscribe. Dude, support your friend. Honestly, when did when did you send it? Because I do subscribe. I do get your It might have been in my out. last newsletter or in the one before that, but Okay. Thank you. Definitely. Well, anyway, I'll check it out. Anyway, point B, yeah, it is definitely different than her, her other stuff. But the first thing that jumped out at me, you know, with this image, you know, besides the the shapes and the, you know, the like near perfect composition is that subtle treatment of the light, um, you know, on those trees. It's that's such a difficult thing to do. Somebody shoots in the snow a lot to get that kind of pure, very subtle gradient between the warm, you know, light, direct light and the subtle blue sh uh, shadows. It's such a difficult thing to do without overdoing it and, uh, yeah. and maintain that contrast. So she did it so well here. Yeah, I love how the the highlights on the snow are white because I could picture somebody else being like, oh, blue hour and just like pushing yeah. the <laughs> white balance slider like way to the yeah. left, and, like yeah. making it like Oompa Loompa blue or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> man. It's just, it's just so nice and like, you know, I, I just, um, you know, like I said, just always like, again, like, I just want to, you know, see different <laughs> stuff and, um you know again somebody that doesn't get like a lot of love um that deserves it you know and um isabel is one of those people so i hope she sees this and i just you know really enjoy your work and yeah it's pretty awesome. great choice there's a uh there's a section on her website um that i was looking at it was uh pohoho uh, i don't know if i got that right Pohoho. um but it's that pillowy lava flow yes yes yes, she, yes yes like gold is such a difficult color i i feel to pull out in a photograph and she she got it yeah and you know what was cool about that too is um it's consistent you know what i'm saying yeah. it was very consistent it wasn't like like it was all over the place everything was very consistent and i yeah really appreciated that in that particular gallery i'm glad you brought that up because um you know, I was looking at that one. I was like, man, this was really interesting. And I really like how 
everything was nice and consistent. This was, it seemed like it was like all over the place, which um, I've, yeah. I've never seen it before anywhere else. I right. mean, it's just, yeah, it's pretty it's, cool. Yeah. And I don't, I, you know, just thinking about like, how would, how would one print that? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I think it was a lot of, so. a lot of, te a lot of test prints. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of paper. Yeah. But it's really, it's definitely worthwhile looking at on the website. Yep. She, her website is great too. It's, um, yeah, she is, she did a good job there. Yeah, her stuff is really great. I recommend everyone check it out. I've been wanting to sneak one of her photos into one of these episodes, but such a long list of people. I got you, Eric. I got you. I appreciate it, man. That's why we do this. Yeah, man. Exactly. How are those uh, Mike's hard treating you there, dude? Mm -hmm. He's on uh, his good. fourth one by now, probably. No, no, no. I'm a second one. It's, you know, nice and, you know, nice and smooth. Got a little, got a little tingle in the body, you know, nothing crazy, but yeah, I'm straight. Good. So I opened a, uh, another Go Brew. This is their double IPA. It's a West, West Coast style. I mean, they don't say it's that. How, how is it a double IPA, IPA if there's no alcohol? What makes it a double? I don't know. <laughs> You're going to have to write to <laughs> them. So it says just, an, just another story, double IPA with Simcoe, Mosaic, and Citra Hops. Oh man, it's hilarious. Yo, I'd be so, curious. I'm definitely curious, Mike. Honestly, so, I mean, it's yes. not. So it's not going to taste like. It's not going to taste like Fivens, right? Like you're not going to. You can't go into it expecting it to be like, yeah. like the stuff that we normally drink. But I mean, it's this is like it's surprisingly good for what it is, you know. And the fact that they're able to refine the crap that much without the key component of the process, which is the alcohol generation, is pretty impressive. <laughs> Well, I'm, yeah. Well, Give it a shot, dude. I will. Yo, I'll, I'll bring you a couple when I see you. I got to get you that print anyway. There you go. Pack it up. Got it. Where are you putting this one on the list? Probably, probably top five or... I would put the, oh, definitely top, definitely top five. I mean, the only other ones, so I've had a bunch. Athletic, Athletic is the other one that's, it's pretty readily available. Um, like I can get it in my local supermarket and it's actually pretty good their uh, hazy ipa um this is better than that even though it's a west coast style it's got a lot more hop flavor to it um i did really like that smoothie though so i would put these as one and two athletic mm. is three and then there's a gigantic cliff to drop off before you get to the other ones i've tried so <laughs> um <laughs> yeah good yep yeah. grant grant dixon never heard of this guy well I, I saved this one. I told Eric I wanted to save this one specifically um, for last, um, um, mainly because um, this guy Grant. Um, I was actually just introduced to his work. I think maybe it could have, not last year, maybe the year before when I did um, Paul's YouTube show. Um, Eric, you know Paul. Paul Helene from um, Australia. Mm. Yeah, talking and, landscape um, photography. Yeah, yeah. So I was chopping it up with him afterwards, and which I love Paul. Like he, such a beautiful, beautiful soul. Um, we did I don't know three hours on his show, and then we did like another three or four hours of just chopping it up afterwards. I was like, bro, like mm -hmm. I gotta go to bed. Like he, just, but he just he has such great energy and such a cool vibe I, I like i have to meet that guy at some point but um this particular gentleman grant dixon came to his uh came to his house as we were we were chatting and he was like yo he's like grant is is a legend down here like when when i say he's legend i'm not saying that just to be saying that he is definitely legend so I, we get off and i went directly and looked up grant and um, he's fucking legend. Um, I can see why he said that. Now, um, work-wise, so like a um, large format a, film guy or yeah, something, or yeah, I'm assuming. Um, you know, the technicals. I'm not really even worried about the technicals and that kind of thing because he can clearly shoot. Um, but um, a couple things. First off, the reason why the main reason why I pick Grant is because nobody knows who he is. Um, yeah, I'd never Grant, heard of him either. Grant's performance. He's not on Instagram. He's Australian, he's, you said? He's Australian. So don't even bother going to his Instagram. But if you go to his website, 
Mm -hmm. This guy is going to take you on a visual journey like no other. And I, I don't use that, you know, loosely. Um, I've looked at tons of images over the years, tons of portfolios and grant portfolio is in my top three. Um, just because he Holy takes crap. me on a, because he takes me on a visual journey that I have never experienced at different locations around the world. Um, you know, different conditions. And as a person, well, I've never have... seen these trees. What the fuck are these? Like, exactly. That's my point. <laughs> so I went to Australia know... and Tasmania and I was exactly. there for weeks and Mars. weeks and weeks. Never saw anything Ex like this. Exactly. That's my point. And there's like and fall I... foliage. Like, yeah, this exactly. is in Australia. This has got to be like, uh, that's like Patagonia uh, actually, or something, uh, but that's even actually Patagonia, South... like it's South America. I think I can't remember. I think it might be Argentina uh. or something like that, but that's what um, I'm thinking, because there's deciduous trees, but then yeah. those 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 trees in the in the mid ground, like the main ones, I've never yeah. seen anything like this. Yeah, I think which gallery I, I are you could, looking at, man? Uh, I can tell you. Hold on, real quick. This is the gallery well, that you want to go to. Go. He's to got. Uh, he's got to have America. like six thousand uh, pictures exactly in his galleries. Yeah. But go he's to got like galleries go to the... and sub galleries and sub galleries and yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And he's got like five hundred in each one. But um. I, I chose this guy because again, it's the exploratory aspects of his work. And I think this is really important. Um, and for me, because I'll never be able to visit all of these areas like this guy has, there's no fucking way. But <laughs> it takes, <laughs> Grant has taken me on a visual journey that I have never experienced before. And I knew that I wanted to do something, you know, completely different. That's going to completely throw everybody for a loop. And when I went on this guy's site, this was again, like, you know, well over, you know, a couple of years ago now, um, like I was completely blown away. I spent days, days on this man's site, looking at all of his travels and just the documentation of some of these scenes is just, it's, it, it's incredible. This is, it's, it's overwhelming. I mean, it's overwhelming. You're, you're just like uh hold oh up in your God. room, like on your laptop, looking at his photos for three days straight, like no water, no food, nothing. Just fucking... honestly, man, uh, like, it's like, like, like unshaven. Yeah, like, <laughs> with the belts around your, with the belts around your neck. <laughs> his underwear. Like, like, <laughs> empty, empty bottles <laughs> of the vino. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like I was just completely, like completely blown away. And yes, it, his stuff is so overwhelming. But honestly, if you just take five minutes, ten minutes, you know, in, in random galleries, dude, you're gonna. It's it's insane how many places this guy has been, and how Can't much wait. he's, and how much he's photographed. He, we need to put Grant Dixon on like on this huge pedestal because this is the ultimate exploration guy um just the stuff that i saw i've seen on his website is just like i've never seen anywhere else and you know this is saying a lot because you know you look at stuff all the time but god damn he's just on another level and when paul said he was legend he's fucking right the guy has been everywhere everywhere god, that's crazy he's got everywhere. some shit, dude it's crazy crazy when, when, he's got when some find shit. Out, it's crazy when you find out about like such an established photographer you never heard of before. Like yeah. they've just been like killing it off like in the darkness. I mean, according it's to so you, crazy. you know, it's in your own little Dude. realm. Dude. This body of work is like I thought Paul's. I knew everybody. Yo, Paul, this guy's shit is like it's such on another level, dude. I mean, <laughs> like I couldn't even Oh, what the hell? It's intense, dude yeah it was it's like on it was like completely on like another like a completely on like a another level man insane and it looks like he's got a couple of um pretty sick books mm. yeah some shit man it's certainly it's enough stock. material to put out a book yeah Jeez. he's got he's got yeah. two it looks like a two different books in stock yeah which is cool i'm gonna check those out for sure yeah one They're of them probably like stock. one of them sold out a thousand pages each what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> Dude's a straight savage. I tried to tell you guys, man. <laughs> wow. Such a good it's pick, like, dude. It's like, what planet do we live like, on? He... Like, yeah. 
It's mm -hmm. he's seeing a whole different planet than than 128 pages. Dude, I was trying to tell you, man. Like I like he's on a whole nother level, man. I well, mean, that, like that's the thing. Like crazy. all of us photographers, like we go a lot of different places, like Greenland, Iceland, Patagonia, uh, Dubai, you know. But there's still like places in Africa that like nobody's photographed. Places in the Amazon, like nobody's photographed. Like there's yeah. there's places out there that like no photographers go still, and uh, you know guys like these, they're getting out there and doing who knows what yeah. i don't you know i i just i like i can only imagine like like this is the guy like you know i probably need to you know get with matt Payne and be like dude you got to interview this guy like this guy yeah. is like yeah it seems amazing he's like he's like on another prison views dude another. matt Payne. matt Payne's whack dude we got to get on prison <laughs> views. yeah yeah get him on the view yeah he's get him right on here first <laughs> Yeah, like Matt Payne would be like, like uh, how'd you get started in photography? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite uh lens and uh what camera are you shooting on? <laughs> nah, that's cool. <laughs> We're like Grant, what what fucking beer are you drinking, you fucking savage? <laughs> oh oh man. man, I can't wait oh, to get Matt on here. <laughs> oh my god he's ready oh my god um but i like i said this is what i, I told eric i said we got to save this guy we got to save grant for last because th he's he's just on another level like there's like nobody is touching this guy nobody like mm -hmm. there's nobody is touching this guy like at all um it, i mean his shit is just it's so crazy and then like this particular image here and i mean he has thousands of images to choose from. I honestly, like, I probably could have did a whole show on every single image just just with him alone. But this totally particular image um, stood out to me because, again, you know, you look at these trees, you got, like, the mossy fir stuff on there. Mm. Um, you got the fall foliage mix in there. You got color contrast all over the place. Um, you know, there's nice color separation. Like, I mean, this just looks like something out of a, like a fairy tale or something like that. This is crazy. Well, if it wasn't for like the deciduous trees, I would think like Columbia, like this kind of Columbia yep. style yep. stuff. Because there's a lot of endemic plants down there that are really crazy that I saw and yeah. Gabriella yeah. showed me in photos. But uh... yeah, man, it's just yeah, I, I man, I can't even tell you, man. Like I said, look, anybody that does, like I said, whoever watches this grant dixon photography go on and bookmark his website it's bookmarked on mine it's one of my inspirations i have a little folder with all the guys that i follow for inspiration he's in here and um hmm. if you just want to take a, a a an amazing visual journey of how beautiful our planet and our world is follow this guy just you know do yourself a favor and you know you having a bad day at work you want to get away and escape go to his website he, he'll take you on a whole another <laughs> a whole nother journey it's crazy that's awesome it's called the monkey puzzle tree oh is that what oh, that okay. is okay i've actually heard of that that is in like uh Argentina, Chile, 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 i think yeah they call it a uh, chilean pine what is um, it called what is it called again monkey it, puzzle tree is it arucaria yes Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that was. Yeah. I wasn't gonna try pronouncing that. These just look different than the it's a, ones. Well, it's a spe I've seen. it's a species of. So it says monkey puzzle tree, a species of whatever that word was. Arucaria, yeah. So those are oh. like these, like it's like a species of pine tree that's like in northern Patagonia. <clears throat> it's not in like Torres del Paine or uh, El Chalten, like in those areas that everybody goes. Uh, it's northern patagonia which like isn't as scenic in terms of like mountains and stuff but there's like really crazy forests that i've i've wanted to check out because uh this one like uh argentinian guide like told me about it because he's like oh you like these trees and stuff like you should go up north and like there's all these other kinds of trees and stuff mm. that are really cool so super cool yeah yeah this is in uh yeah this is in argentina argentina and mm. uh southern chile um crazy yeah yeah patagonia it's like the northern part of patagonia yeah mm. chilean pine mm. pino nero yeah so yeah i was yeah, i was diving diving in on his south georgia 
portfolio and then the dude caracorum oh my god <laughs> like, who goes to south dude, georgia <laughs> dude, that oh south, my god so, like the south, the south, the south, the yeah, south? The, south the south georgia and that whole antarctica stuff <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, South Georgia Islands. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy, crazy, crazy. I mean, that's where Shackleton like stepped up. Right. <laughs> I'm like, God dang. Did you read Sorry. Endurance, Jimmy? Oh, it's one of my favorite books. So insane. Like, that is, it is one of the most insane stories. Did Did yeah. you read Alone on the Ice as well? Yep. Yep. That one's even more horrible. And a lot of those guys went on the endurance like 10 years later or, you know, like right after they came back, they survived that somehow because most of them died on that trip. Yeah. That was the Australian one. And then, uh, oh, so yeah, a lot of them went back with Shackleton, like the photographer Hurley, whatever his name is, like he went yeah. back and uh, the main guy that survived, like the leader, he went back and then they got stranded again. Like, oh, my God. Like, and then to land on South bad. Georgia and then have to climb over the mountain range. <laughs> yeah yeah shackleton when you over elephant island yeah nobody had ever done it before he just like <laughs> oh here we go guys <laughs> like, it, is it in that yeah. book or is it alone on the ice where they take turns cutting <laughs> each other open to drink each other's blood to stay alive oh my god that's uh, alone on the wow. ice I think. wow dude can you imagine no they're, they're cutting themselves each night to drink each other's blood to stay alive like that's that's like all they can do in this that's that's so, that sounds uh, yeah, so heavy. The, the South Georgia <laughs> portfolio will bring you right yeah. there. <laughs> uh, well, all I got to say is I, I I spent a lot of time on that guy's site over the last, you know, like I said, I, I think it was like two years now. But God damn, man. I mean, wow. Yeah, that's um, some crazy stuff. But all I can say is bookmark his website. Dude, the, the done and done. excited. The Banff and Island stuff is great too. Wow, he's yeah. just got his shit is really it's very exploratory. Yes. And you know, and yeah. again, just you know, as a person that like I said, I'll never get to visit these places and but the curiosity of just knowing what's out there, you know, is just like it's so cool. And, you know, he brings me there and I, that's what I really appreciate about his work. And um yeah, I just, I just, I just really like it. It's crazy. It's funny, like of as many places as he's been, the one place he's pretty much not been in is anywhere in America other than uh, Alaska. <laughs> yeah, which is it's which is crazy. Enough. Oh, yeah. like seriously, it's just not. He's just like, oh yeah, yeah. that's not wild enough. I'm not going there. Yeah, I can yeah. get there by car. No way. Eric <laughs> Benner already did everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Hilarious. I want to see some Mesa Arch. Oh, oh man. Speaking of the Southwest. Bad boy. Oh, oh shit. Here we go. Here's so, uh, um, I'm, I'm going first here because I got I to gotta hop off here in a, in a little bit to go pick up my daughter tonight. But, uh, dude, going through your gallery is uh, tough work because just, just trying to pick out you know, something that really is a good representation of your stuff. I mean, your swamp stuff, I've just gotten lost in that. It's just like, wow. I mean, it's, it's image and after image and after image of greatness. And my conversations with Derek, uh, with Eric was like, okay, if, if we've got some representation there of the swamp stuff, I'm going to go with some desert stuff because I know that's where you like to hang. Yep. And uh, this is great, man. I remember when I first saw this image, I was like, just so blown away of there's just so much good stuff going on here the light yeah. hitting that uh hitting that and yeah, the the candle yeah man yeah um, so I don't know exactly where this is too and i tried to find like a this is an aerial that you shot with your drone i tried to find like an angle of it to shoot like telephoto and i couldn't yeah. for the life of me yeah man so it's like the only way you can photograph it What's actually kind of cool about this image is kind of funny because it kind of ties back into <clears throat> on the last episode which you guys had with Alex and he was talking about his drone stuff and, um, you know, about the different perspectives and, and that kind of thing because, you know, I think a lot of people when they get the drone, they just want to, you know, fly high to the cosmos and whatever else and which is cool and you can get some, you know, you really unique perspectives. But, 
you know, over the years, you know, I've just gotten a little bit more proficient with different perspectives with the drum. And this particular section here, if you go super high, it completely changes. If you're, you know, at a certain altitude, you go a little bit lower, it completely changes how this whole area looks. And this is, you know, one of those scenes where it's like that, where, you know, you're not super high, but you're not super low. And you're kind of like in that in-between, in-between area. And this is the result of that. And then, well, and the way you made this, the glowing spire fit like perfectly within the shadows, like yeah. instead of like overlapping mm -hmm. the, the highlights or something, you know? Yeah. And then again, that comes with experience too, because if you go, like if you go further down, you take the needle, it pushes up, it, it hits the ridge in that background, right? So that's not going to look right. So, you know, again, you're uh, composing with the altitude of the drone. And, you know, again, I'm just using my basic compositional uh, concepts of using the conversion lines into our subject. We're using the light, um, the glowing light to light up the spire. Um, so um, it's just combining the elements like we talked about earlier, combining elements um, of uh, composition that you learn shooting different scenes. And you're just taking that and then you're putting it into the you know, into the aerial slash drone work. I just want to know why you had the audacity to put the spire dead center if that's not allowed in photography. I know. Well, <laughs> I'll be the first to tell you I'm a rule breaker. So um, I don't <laughs> I don't follow any rules when it comes to photography, like the rule of thirds and all that other shit. Um, I threw that. I threw that. I, I threw that concept out the window, you know, probably 15 years ago. Um, people were looking at me crazy when I would tell them that, but you know, it seems now that people break those rules all the time. Um, the one thing that I, I will not do is like, if I'm shooting a scene that has sky and foreground, I, pro I probably will never do like a 50, 50 comp of like half sky and half, you know, foreground. Yeah, horizon. yeah I won't do that. But, uh, other than that, I just, you know, it just has to make sense to me, you know, of what I'm seeing, you know, whether the spire be in the middle or, you know, off to the side yeah, the or whatever the case. Yeah, it just has to make sense to me. So, yeah, I, I threw the rules out ages ago. Love it. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, I appreciate it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, appreciate that. Super nice how it has like the repeating diagonal pattern mm -hmm. uh, from like top right, bottom left, all the yep. way to that top mm -hmm. corner. And then the spire is just right in the middle, just glowing, like breaking the pattern, which causes it to draw attention. And it's just, yeah. Yeah. And it, is this one by one or is this four by five? This is four by five. A four, four by five. I think if yeah. I would have did <clears throat> one of the things that I, I would have done probably in post, um, I would have took that little um, piece of light at the top, like in the top right, I would have probably would have, you know, took that out um, now just being that I'm just a little bit more mature with how I process and, you know, distracting elements. Um, I probably would have took that out, but um, I just think that the the subject itself is so strong that, um, you know, I don't really get caught up on that, but I, you know, looking at yeah. this and, and haven't looked at it in some time, um, I probably would have took that out. I feel like you use light in the best possible way here. Yeah, I mean, and again, it's with the drone, man. I mean, like, come on, it's this shit is, you know, it's hard, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're, you're, you're trying to compose, <laughs> you're, you're trying to compose, you know, the scene from the air and the light is going super quick. And, you know, you know, you got to keep in mind, regardless of what altitude you're at, the light is going to be different. So if I go down another, you know, 30 feet, that light is not going to be exactly the same, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If I go up another 100 feet, that light is going to be completely different. So, um, you know, working the light and the elements and making it all kind of flow is, you know, a challenge in itself. So, you know, I don't beat myself up about it because it's different, right? It's different. It's unique. Who's doing and at this point in time, who was doing anything remotely close to that? So um, I'll, I'll take that one. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah. One. Well said. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, that that curving line you have on the right is uh... It's so cool too. Yeah, but man. The little yeah, the little squiggly, squiggly guy. Squiggly. Yeah. It's, Take that yeah, out, then, and it's just it. You know, it it's awesome, it's, but it, it it adds another element to it. It's really cool. yeah. And the other thing that I liked about this scene too, I think when I was originally shooting it, was um, 
if you look at the if you look at the spire and the light that's directly to the right of it, if you it's almost like if you lay the spire down, it's like the spire mimics that light, which I think was yep. really cool too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. I love the other image you have of this same little spot. Um, the, the reverse looking for the of, name it. of it. Midtown oh, lights. Mid- that one Midtown is so lights. sick. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, you know, a little bit away, but you know, same general general area. Yeah, I love that one. Like the light and shadow are perfect, and yeah, man. the arrangement yeah. and everything. Yeah, that was a that was a that's a good one, man. Classic right there. All right, you guys. Hey, I gotta hop off, but uh, Later, David, homie. always a pleasure. Good to see mm-hmm. you. Good to uh, be, man. Good to appreciate. Good it, to man. see it. Yeah, it was. Good, uh, good. This, good chopping it up with you man good times absolutely yeah good uh really really great stuff uh from the selection process tonight and uh, you absolutely did not disappoint you came with some uh some great stuff so we appreciate you and uh, i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to finish watching this episode uh when we post it up so (laughs) hey do us proud you guys have a couple more beers buddy yeah we'll try to make it through it without you buddy i know well now now that now that paul now that Paul's gone, let's have a good time, guys. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you guys, Crack you up guys suck. <laughs> David's going to pull out right, the, the real stuff. The, the barrel aged bottles are selling. Oh, man. Crack open All the All right, you guys. All right, Paul, Crush it. Yeah, bro. Yep. See you Later, guys. brother. Oh, God. I'm glad we got rid of that fucking guy. Finally. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> fucking about anchor. Time, man. God, I, I told I was just telling them how much I like them. I just really can't stand them. <laughs> <laughs> we we can't either. We can't get them out of here. Yeah. I don't even know how he got yeah. on the the cast of the show. It was like I, yeah, I didn't man. think it through. I don't. I don't you emailed the link to the wrong guy. Um, yeah, yeah, the other Paul. Yeah, I meant to nice. email uh, Bob Bowman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the other Bowman. <laughs> which, by the way, which by the way, Bob. He's got also, good stuff. Uh, Bob is another another Sonoma really good, County. Yeah, he's another really good friend of mine. If you can get him on here, he has uh, some interesting some stories too. Man, he's a cool dude. Man, I, I really I really like him. He has a lot of stuff going on right now. He's remodeling the house, and yeah, he, yeah, he's been know, kind of quiet. He's just busy, man. He's remodeling the house. He took up like a new job position. He's like a supervisor now, and you know he's towards the tail end of his uh, you know his work career and getting ready to retire. So. You know him getting that that uh that new position, man. He got like a nice bump, you know, and pay and stuff. So he's just trying to ride the rest out, you know, for retirement. But I love Bob, man. He's such a good dude, man. So cool. Who's that yeah, other that dude guy. in Sonoma County? I think he's friends with Bob Bowman. Michael. Oh, Michael. Michael Ryan. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, he's got cool good too. stuff too. I give the I was I was giving Michael a hard time, like it, you know, if you ever talk to him or see him, I, I call him a coffee snob because he's all like. He's all proper with his coffee, and he has to have like this, like special brews and all this other shit. That's what, that's what I'm getting now. I'm, I've been getting like uh, yeah, super dude. posh coffee. I got a hand grinder. Yeah, and... yeah he stepped all... up from Sanka. <laughs> <laughs> his fold. His was it Folgers. 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 Yeah, Maxwell House. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, Michael, Michael, and uh, Bob, they're really solid dudes, man. Good shooters too, man. They can. Yeah. They can shoot, man. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we brought them up because I should uh, feature something from them soon. Yeah, yeah cool. I just forgot about them because they haven't been posting lately. But I'll go dig some up. Yeah, they got some nice. stuff. Man. Yeah. So, uh, so I chose this one. Um, God, for for so many reasons. Number one, um, it's obviously a foliage image. But what I love about it is it's not the type of foliage I get to see out here on the on the East Coast. We don't have that kind of spaced out. Yeah. Um, at least not commonly. And the way that you you framed this is so, so perfect. There's flow with the color. There's, there's yeah. you know, a transition in the spacing uh, between the trees and, and the repeating pattern, too, of those nice, you know, kind of straight non-branched trunks. Yeah. Um, you know, everything about it just kind of pulls you right into that image, and there's just so much to see. 
kind of go right to the center of the eye, just kind of wanders around and, and yeah. kind of appreciates it. And um, I think it captures the transition too really well yeah. between the, the deciduous trees down low, kind of transitioning yep. to the evergreens a little bit higher up. Yep. Um, so it really kind of tells a story of the kind of local ecosystem. And so, you know, in addition, obviously being aesthetically beautiful, it's it kind of tells a little bit of a story. It's super engaging. So yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. Right you have like every single color on the fall spectrum in this photo too, like the yeah. green, yeah, yeah, the yeah, dark green to lime green to yellow to orange to red to mm -hmm. dark red. Amazing. Yeah, so yeah, I appreciate that, man. So I, I can't remember what year I shot this in, but I usually visit this area in uh, southern Utah um, every every fall. I usually go here, and every fall it's different, um, different colors. But I always know that. I, there, I'm always going to get really, really, really nice, nice either golden yellows or the nice that nice like reddish orange, and I'm definitely going to get some red. So I always, always, always visit this area. Um, on this particular year, um, it was really nice because there was a nice um, transition of colors on this hillside. This is uh, all shot like um, 400 millimeter plus, and um, you always get this nice transition here you just don't know how what it's going to be like because it obviously varies every year um but this particular section was super nice this particular year it was like you have all the like eric said the whole spectrum of fall fall foliage right mm -hmm. um what was really cool about the scene is like the two or the three little guys in the foreground like just kind of you know starting there and then if you notice everything kind of just starts to flow towards the middle and then like you said with the transition of colors it just kind of you know goes back mm -hmm. into the hillside and you know you got the the pines that are you know um are bare and then you got some that are fully green and, and that kind of thing so um super unique scene like i told you earlier i love i love shooting in you know the soft light because like that's where i'm going to get my you know the best colors and um, not no crazy color cast and that kind of thing. So um, just everything was flowing really nicely here. And what's funny about this scene, there was actually uh, like three deer in the open area on the right. Um, that was just to the right of that center tree in the, in the middle of the frame. Mm -hmm. I ended up cloning them out, but it was so cool just seeing like, <laughs> the deer. It was so cool just seeing the deer just kind of wandering around on the hillside and stuff. But yeah, that was a super cool morning i remember just being super cold um real chilly and you know just beautiful fall foliage just all throughout that hillside i think this was yeah. like 2019 because in 2020 you went out to colorado and we saw yeah, each sounds other about right yeah that sounds about right that sounds about right but yeah man it just i i just love this area and um it's one of the few places that i can go like i know that i'm gonna go there and i'm not gonna see anybody i'm just gonna be there by myself so you know i'm always uh enjoying that yeah lets you focus better yeah what in, definitely what intrigues me about this one is um aspens are a really interesting tree and so they drop seeds which have like little wings which like can travel off and like float pretty far away to um create new trees but um they also like have these shoots that grow underneath the ground and they'll grow new trees like they'll spawn so it's like technically the same tree just shooting up from different parts of the earth but if it's the same tree they all change color at the same time and they'll all be the same color but here like you have so many different groups of color which implies if i'm not mistaken that they're all different species of aspen like they're not they're not the same like they haven't spawned from the same aspen they're all like new ones that were um Makes that sense. sprouted up by themselves like from seeds or something so it's like a new colony of aspens or something like that yeah that totally makes sense that's cool because um you know like you see like those little lone guys there in the foreground which mm -hmm. are you know like the baby aspen right but then when you go further back into the hillside you get more of the quote-unquote normal aspen Mm -hmm. um that are within the scene so um i think that's i think that's cool I, that's that's a that's a you know good uh yeah good point there man. so if they're different colors mm -hmm. they're not the same organism is what i understand because the 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 organism will change colors at the same time like all the different shoots uh that's crazy wow. yeah so they're all different organisms that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's really cool. That's, that's a, why like that's the cool. panda forest is like it used to be the largest living organism on earth until they found the honey mushroom up in uh I think it was Washington or Oregon that they realized was bigger. But yeah, it's the largest living organism because every single tree there is the same it's the same tree. It's not that's individual crazy. ones. No, that's cool. It's uh, really yeah. cool. Yeah, so their their yeah. roots like go out like horizontally and they'll have these like vertical shoots that grow new aspens. That's cool, man. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I, I, thanks for, you know, picking this image because, you know, it brings back memories and, you know, just a, such a cool scene that, you know, sometimes I look at these images and I'm like, oh, you know, what? I did make that. I don't even remember that. But yeah, <laughs> it's really cool. Thanks for that. Yeah, man. Love it. Great image. Yeah, I've never been out there in the fall, but it's 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 kind of cool to see that they, you do get those, you know, those. I don't know pinks mild reds um, dude on top of the golden yellows and oranges. yo yeah. you should see you should see the stuff that i shot last fall oh my god i haven't i haven't got a chance to process them yet but man the reds were like they're like this pastel kind of reddish pink oh so nice so nice and, you and talk- then, yeah and the same area but then like mixed in with like like these golds and kind of the orange it's crazy. So nice. Yeah, it's Can't super, see super nice. Yeah, it'll it's super nice, man. Oh man, so nice. That like those reds were they're almost like a violet, which I you don't right. I haven't really seen on aspens, but it was so nice. So 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 and like pastel y, not like overly saturated, almost like right. a like almost like a muted violet color. Super nice. Yeah, last fall was really nice. It was really short, like it was really quick, yeah. but it was great while it lasted. And I saw a lot more red in the aspens than I usually do, especially here in Utah. Usually they're just like yellow. Like yeah. in Colorado, you'll find like a lot of variety in color. But uh, yeah, here in Utah, there's a ton of red and orange and a lot of diversity in color. That, yeah, that Mike and I nice. get on the on the eastern side, we get occasionally some of the maples, they turn like this red and you just you blow out yeah. your yeah <laughs> you blow out your sensor like instantly yeah it's impossible to expose them oh right, right, yeah right. Just so crazy yeah mike if you want to come out here in the fall as well you're coming out right now in the spring but uh yeah dude i'd love to i can show you some cool stuff near my house so when's uh when's your peak foliage out there typically like first week of october is a safe bet sometimes second yeah. week of october is better sometimes late late september is really good just depends on the season but i'd say like nowadays first week of october yeah. october like yeah. october then, fi- if you came out from like the fifth to like the tenth you'd most likely find some great stuff and the yeah. other thing too the other thing it's too like might be is um you know it depends on like what kind of look you want in your trees too you know what i'm saying yeah because like, i like i'm like mostly bare i think i think david's yeah. kind of similar like more sparse instead yeah. of like still yeah. i yeah i prefer mine a little bit towards towards the latter part of the yeah you know the of the peak color um i personally like the a little bit more of the bare trees yeah no yeah. i agree you know, i would love to do that huh. love this one. The, the reflected light in this one is ridiculous like so good it's just glowing <laughs> glowing it's so yeah so um yeah, this is an interesting pick. Um, I love the composition here too. So this was a selection that I made because I love that whole gallery you have of uh, sandstone slot canyons. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's hard to pick just one, but this one, I feel like it's just like such a nice, like it's not like the typical shot that most people do, like just down the corridor, which I love. Yeah. Like I have stuff like that too. Like you can't help it. Yeah. But this is like a much, um, much more unique one in that it's like more about like the shapes and. Uh, yes. Yeah, really nice subtle composition here. Um, really nice like geometry yeah. and uh... yeah. Um, so so first off, when it comes to you know my slot canvas images, like I and I've told Eric this before, like I won't even I won't even put a lens on any slot canyon if it doesn't have any kind of reflected light. Like to me, like for me personally, I have to have a glow. That's you know what these you know what the slot canvas is about like if you, you know if there's like no glow coming in any kind of reflected light like i'm not even gonna bother with it like i'm just gonna even yeah. pass i won't you won't even see me even bother with a slot canyon in the winter time um 
fall, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even waste my time. But late spring, early summer, you know, when sun is much higher and then that light is bouncing around in those canyons, I'm I'm all in. Like, you know, that's you know, for me. Um, second thing, uh, slot canyons by far, in my opinion, and the stuff that I've worked on, besides maybe the Columbia images, is uh, by far the hardest images that I've processed um, out of all my work. Um, you know, with the slot canyons, it's just super hard to really dial in, you know, the tones and, you know, not be oversaturated, not too much magenta, not too much orange and red. Yeah, and those so shadows so can forth. get like really purpley and yeah, super purpley and that kind of thing. So um, I always try to, you know, be mindful of how I process um, these images. So, you know, by far, like if any of the images that you see on my website, the slot canyon gallery by far was the hardest for me to, uh, you know, process and put together. Um, but that so being when you said, set, sorry, when ahead. you set the white balance for these kinds of scenes, do you set it like so the highlights look good and you fix the shadows yes. or you set it so yeah. the shadows look good and you fix the highlights? Highlights always, always. Because like with my glow and, it, and if you look at all my images on my website, like all my glow is almost like the same tone. It's like a yellowish orange, right? Right. Um, I always like more of like a yellowish orange glow, preferably. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like it like super orange. I want more of like a, a little bit whitish, you know, yellowish yeah. light in there. So I always try to expose for that, you know, when I'm um, when I'm in the field. And then, you know, the, a lot of times, you know, the shadows just kind of come into play. They'll kind of do their own thing, you know, once you, you know, once you um, expose that, make that exposure for the highlights, they're either gonna go like a little bit cooler, more, like you said, a little bit more purpley, or they'll get a little bit more magenta. And then, you know, yeah. obviously you're doing some, you know, white balance adjustments to kind of, you know, fix that. But um, when I'm in the field, I'm always exposing for the glow. Um, with this particular scene, it's all about the overlapping layers here. Um, it almost gives you, it gives you that, like that 2D, three-dimensional feel because of how the light and shadows are playing against each other. Um, but this particular scene, what caught my eye is where the glow is at you know, you can't tell if that background layer is forward or back or the... Yeah, it becomes like disorienting. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like it's hard to tell Because you didn't include enough like on top or below either. Exactly. Like it's a tight enough frame where you don't give away like right. that kind of context. And yeah, and that's one of the things that I was going for there is like I, I wanted to do... I wanted to kind of give it that mysterious feel like it, is it closer? Is it further away? Um, and what's funny about this particular image, I originally had it in black and white, which I'd never do. I won't say never, but most of the time I don't really prefer slot images in black and white. I think I have one that was in black and white. And the only reason why, because the contrast looks so fucking cool. But um, this was originally in black and white. And then when I was doing the website, I was just kind of like, I went back to the master and I was like, I'm just going to go back with the original because the light was so nice and glowy. And I was like, nah, I got to go with the glowy one. So I ended up ditching the black and white and going with this one. But um, it's all about the overlapping layers. You know, those little, the little curvations at the very top and the top left were super cool. And I think that added like a, an extra layer of depth within the image. Um, and again, just something, you know, something different. You know, I've had this conversation with Eric, you know, a handful of times that in my personal opinion, I feel like the majority of slot images aren't done very well. Um, Processing so wise or composition linear? Both, um, both. I, I feel mainly um, processing, but I don't really feel like a lot of, you know, slot images that you see are just composed very well. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of slot images, if you go back to, you know, like um, Iza and Stefan, you know, Shinaski, again, they got some of the best slot images that are out there. Um, again, compositions are great and, you know, how they process them look really good. So, um, you know, a lot of inspiration drawn from them on just, you know, keeping it simple. And, you know, with this particular image, it was like, like I said, just about the overlapping layers and um, just really um, emphasizing on the reflected light in the background. Yeah, it's super nice. I'll take that. I'll take that E. What year was this one from? Do you remember? 
Man, um, more or less, so how long ago? Oh, let me think. Uh, that was probably like 2017, 2016, somewhere around there. Um, I, I was actually with Miles. This is uh, Miles and I were, were uh, shooting this particular slot canyon. And um, we were tripping out on the reflected light in there, and um, you know Miles was just losing his shit, and I was like, I was like, dude, yeah. When I'm you staying... see it like this in real life, it's like unreal. Dude, it's it's so crazy, and like we were just tripping out, and um, we were on one of those little slot tours or whatever, and you know the this was back when you can just kind of wander around, and you know the people. I think there might have been another photographer in there, but he was down on the other end of the slot where it was all dark and stuff. And we were just like, dude, like, what are you doing? You need to be over yeah. here. This is where it's yeah. at. And that, sh <laughs> that shit was glowing like crazy, man. It was wild. But yeah, it was, uh, I think that might have been 20, yeah, maybe like 2016, 2017, somewhere in there. Hmm. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it's so sick. Yeah, that was, that was uh, yeah, I remember that one. That was a good one right there sandstone yeah, art yeah man that's you know one of my favorites man it's uh that's one of those galleries where i'm super like i'm super proud it's a really of. impressive gallery yeah thanks man yeah, I, I just moving up like, right here like i'm just really like it's one of those ones that, like i can be like yeah that shit's like that's my shit you know what i'm saying because it's like so different and you don't see like a ton of those images out there and um you know just again different and you know it's something i can say like yeah i got that and you know i did that and spent a lot of time a lot of years you know going down there um down into arizona and you know photographing those slots i don't know if anybody else that has like an all slot canyon gallery i think there might be i think there might be a couple out there but um yeah not quite like that yeah that you one, know what this kind of reminds me of like uh that? One of like Mark Adamus's old like slot cannon images. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I could totally From like see 2008, that. 2008, 2010 era Mark Adamus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, the the more subtle process in Mark, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. It was good times back then, man. I mean, Mark is still killing it right now, but yeah, right. I think I think what was really cool about that time it was like you know it was just so different. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think that was like a, brand new. Yeah, it was like, you know, early. And I think a lot of people are trying to make that transition to, um, you know, process a certain kind of way and that kind of thing. So well, I think, I think a lot of people that it. find him now don't realize he has so much great intimate and abstract work in his older portfolio. God, so mm. crazy. And I've always said, you know, and you and I have had this conversation there because like I, I always feel like Mark is the best. You know, when you look at, um, you know, for me personally, when I, I don't look at just, you know, one particular subject. When you consider Mark, like everything. Everything. Yeah. You, you look at the complete body of work and everything that Mark has done. Mark has yeah. like, he has that shit. Um, and mm -hmm. our, and our, I don't know if you want to say generation of, of photographers, but, you know, obviously there's, you know, older cats and, you know, guys before us, like, you know, Munch and um, William, you know, Neil and, um, you know, some others, Cecil. you know, well, Cecil, he's, he's, he's all rocks. Cecil will tell you, he's like, I don't shoot anything but rocks. <laughs> right. He's <laughs> not like, like exploring. I, no, uh, no, no, no. He, uh, South America and uh, right, Middle right, East right. and stuff. And, Right. Um, and, you know, like guys like Mark and William and, you know, David Munch and, you know, the other guy we were talking about, Mr. Nixon, uh, Grant, you know, those kind of guys, like when it's all said and done for me, like regardless if I just completely stop photographing the landscape or I just, God forbid, I fall off the face of the earth, you know, I have always wanted to have like just a well rounded body of work you know and i think that you know i'm well on my way to that and um i think that's for me personally as an artist that's you know one of my goals is to have that complete body of work so i can show up anywhere if i show up in your guys's neck of the woods on the east coast i'm not going to be completely lost in the sauce like 
you know, mm-hmm. staring up at these, you know, staring at these trees like, oh, like, what do I do here? You know, or whatever. I can just, you know, you can just put me in this place and you give me two days, I can figure something out. That's kind of where I want to be at. And um, again, I think that comes with experience and, um you know, just maturing as a person, as an individual, like, you know, like I told you, Eric, you know, your work has improved since, you know, we first met and, you know, life experience and you seeing the world differently and that kind of thing. So um, I think all of that matters, you know, with, you know, with our imagery, because that's an extension of us. And, um, you know, I just want to continue to grow, grow with that. So, yeah, it's, you know, important for me to have that diverse work. I've just never wanted to, like, limit myself to one type of geography for the sake of like a gimmick or something like i just love like all aspects of nature and i want to see as much as i possibly can of the world like i've slowed down quite a bit in recent years like international traveling because of pandemic and like having Mm. two more kids and stuff like that but um so i've been focusing on a lot more stuff like near where i live which i really love and i've only grown a deeper relationship with but i still like have in mind like going to lots of different places all over the planet because i just I can't get enough of it. And I just want to see like every different uh, facet of nature as, as I possibly can. It yeah, all fascinates kind of, me. Yeah. This is kind of where I'm at. And I'm, and it was so cool as I'm still learning, you know, and I'm like, I don't feel like, you know, I've been doing this quite, you know, for a while now and I don't even feel like I've hit my peak, you know, like, like I've like plateaued, you know what I mean? So I feel like I'm still growing and still um, expanding, you know, mentally and, you know, with my work you know, creatively too. So yeah, it's, uh, it's cool, man. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, man. God damn. <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing this one when you first yeah. shared it and I was like, Oh my God, what yeah, are we doing? <laughs> yeah, I just, man. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just love this one. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I knew what you were doing, but, uh, the way you had labeled it just really, um, yeah elevate what was the title of this one that was the um the uh, uh the mount uh, what did i what did i call this one um i'm gonna tell you hold on uh it was the hold on it was um rising ghost yeah the rising ghost, ghost. Yeah. yeah i thought it was like and, ghost or phantom or something yeah yeah and i i remember it was crazy because like this was my first aerial trip in iceland and you know i don't care what anybody says like shooting aerials is fucking hard. It's it's hard. <laughs> um, I don't care what anybody says or how how easy you can get in there and just, you can just make something. This shit right here, this image, this shit is hard. It's it's hard. You know, it just doesn't. You know, you can point your camera at all kinds of cool stuff on the ground, but making it make sense, it's hard. It's you know, it it it's hard. That's why I have a deep appreciation for guys like Hans. And, you know, some of these other guys, Carolyn, you know, for example, you know, crazy abstract shit, you know, aerial stuff, but the shit is hard. It's not easy. You just can't, don't go up there and you get to point your camera and you're shooting stuff. The plane is moving. You got to have your settings right. Yeah, the shit is hard. But I remember in this particular section, um, we had a, quite a few passes around here. And um, what's cool about this is like, you know, it's the glacier water, but you still have some of these, it's almost like a sandbar that's in the middle of this river where, you yeah, know, the sand, sand is being, where it's being exposed. And, you know, I told uh, Mr. Johnson, who was my pilot, I was like, look, you know, fly back over that, you know, you're telling them, you know, to, you know, bank around. And, and that's the other thing too, you know, being, able being able to you know tell the pilot when to bank or how to bank you know some people might come off a little shy when you know right. you're telling your pilot hey bank you know and he's only doing it like this but i asked him at the very beginning i was like hey how hard would you bank and he was like well as hard as you want me to i said okay so you get more of the top down <laughs> views like this so instead of you know people banking like this i'm like bank and he's like this so if you're like this Right. The plane is like this and you're looking out the window, you're getting your top down view, which is what you get here. And it took me a few passes to get something, you know, decent. And you just tell them to keep on going and you're snapping, you're shooting as you're doing that rotation. 
and which is cool because you know your composition is changing your lines are you know doing different things and and and, and that kind of thing but um yeah so you know you're and you're looking at this stuff in your camera you know as you're shooting and you're just like hoping and praying that you know the composition is 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 decent because how do you you know how do you go back to a composition like this if you you know you don't like a full circle around mm -hmm. it right if he changes you know the direction yeah, yeah, of the plane a little bit you know all of that makes a makes a difference so um with this particular image here um you know we're just flying around this and i'm just like damn i hope i got something good because that section was so fucking cool um i'm kicking myself because i wish i would have spent a little bit more time there which i did it but um yeah it was uh it was really 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 cool and when i got back when i got done and you know i got back to you know the a little camper van you know i'm looking at the images on the back of the lcd and i was like damn this looks so cool and you know again you know when you're titling stuff when you get to the processing and you're titling stuff when it's all said and done you know to me this is like it looks like this is like ghosts just rising you know from who knows where um you know into different shapes and, and different patterns um you know again and then the processing right like not going too blue not going blue enough, you know, you don't need this, to. Right, you know, not going super crazy with the contrast, not going too black, you know, you still want to mm -hmm. give the feeling of that black sand. Um, yeah, that black sand could have easily gone like straight black. Yeah, right. exactly. So, you know, a lot of a lot of fine tuning and a lot of adjustments and, you know, just minor tweaks and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, one of my more artistic abstracts if you will um that i've made and um you know again you know i you see these images and i haven't looked at it in a little bit and it's almost like damn i i took that like i can't even you know like damn that was me <laughs> um so yeah that was um that's a really really cool scene and and i usually don't even talk about my work like that but yeah this one was uh this was really cool yeah so was, you uh, shot it on eight by ten film <laughs> I wish. <laughs> no. Oh man. Uh, Can you imagine? Uh, hanging no, out like no, I can't. Oh like honest, I can't because you know, just shooting it digitally was is fucking hard. Like I said, it's super <laughs> yeah. hard. Um, and then, like I said, you're taking, you're taking that, and you know, again, you're doing, you know, multiple, you know, passes, you know, trying to, um, you know, get you know, a composition that makes, makes sense. Right? right. So yeah, this shit is hard, man. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Is anybody that tells you, anybody that tells you that shooting aerials is easy, that shit is hard. I, I mean, <laughs> this shit is hard. I think, so, I think Hans in the, in his episode, he suggested like, it's tough, you know, and, it, and the dollars is. are rolling out the oh, whole Yeah, he was very glad to adopt <laughs> oh. digital work yeah dude it's like i couldn't even i couldn't even imagine like you know when hans first started doing this and he's you know doing this like you said on eight by ten or yeah know, it'd be so frustrating like seeing all this stuff and having to be super oh, selective dude yeah and then you know or you know four right. by five large format medium format whatever and you're mm -hmm. just like like you said you're just you know you're just doing these passes and then like you said you're just missing compositions and you're just like oh man i hope i got mm -hmm. it are you you know are you shooting fast enough like it's a whole like a whole thing so right um this shit is hard man i mean it, it's hard and i'm and, and 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 again in my opinion that's why you don't really see a lot of you know great aerial images is because this shit is hard <laughs> it's hard it's super hard and it's expensive and yeah it's uh like a whole thing so I mean, yeah. just out of curiosity, is like the palette similar to what you experienced or, you know, I know it's going to depend on time of day, but yeah, is yeah. It like that light blue gray. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is actually, um, if you go into, which is kind of cool too, and, and also this also will depend on your light too, right? So on our day, on this, on this particular visit, um, we had diffused light, so it was a little a little cloudy at first. Mm -hmm. um, it got considerably more cloudy when we, the further we went up into the highlands. But yeah, it's um, very 
it was very monochromatic. Um, in fact, I was expecting to get more, more blue. You know what I mean? I thought it was going to be a little bit more blue, which there was some section that were a little bit more blue. Um, I got maybe, I think I got one on my website on that, on that particular flight where it was a little bit more blue, but, um, yeah, it's like this, um, very pastel kind of milky, like mm. bluish, I don't know, bluish green, you know, mm -hmm. mint, mint kind of color. Um, yeah, it's all that, that color is all, it's all there, man. It's, it's, yeah. it's a, trip. it's such a rare color that we run yeah. into anywhere. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Like and then, the, and you got to think too. So the other thing, you know, that, you know, people don't talk about with these, these, um, these glacier rivers is like, if it rains, you get like a lot of rain before they get more brown. Right. Right. Yeah. So, all the dirt and sediment. Uh, yeah. So you get all the silt, you know, you get all Flooding. the silt coming through. Yeah. You also so you can't see those more. deltas or like all that three dimensionality you see here, like yeah. the variances and the tones. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it depends, you know, it all, all depends on the conditions. So, you know, it's good to get like a, you know, you want maybe like a mix because I mean, if you get that mix, it, it makes for more interesting, you know, photography, obviously, right? Because you're going to get different colors, different tones, um, and stuff is not going to look all the same. So, you know, what I shot here is going to look completely different if I shoot, you know, a mile down the road or down the, you know, down the way closer to, you know, the ocean, the ocean outlet, you know what I'm saying? Where this river meets the ocean. So, Crazy. yeah, it's going to, it's going to vary from, you know, from location to location and, and your conditions. And, you know, the light, if you have, you know, sunny skies and you get that, you know, more direct light hitting on, on the water, you're going to get, you know, a little bit more blue. So a um, little bit more color in there. So yeah, it just, you know, it all depends on conditions. Wow. Did you, I know a lot of times you like to shoot in camera, like with certain aspect ratios. Did you shoot this in one by yes. one or did you crop it later? Uh, this one, I, this one, I, I did a uh, crop um, just because I got scared at that time. Cause I typically don't shoot. I wasn't shooting one, one, you know, a lot, you know, um, from the air at least right um on the ground i got a little bit more leeway but i was like i'm not even i'm not even gonna take a chance um yeah. i did i did two three and five four um in camera you know with my aerials and you know just switched it up as i needed to so yeah um and you know you and i have talked about it. i don't do a lot of you know one ones but you know this one was just kind of you know asking for it so yeah yeah that's a perfect choice for this yeah, so, yeah, for sure. But I would feel right. comfortable now. I would feel comfortable now um, if I was to, you know, go back and I wanted to get, you know, super creative. I would probably, you know, I would switch to one one. I would do all three ratios. You know, the only thing is, like, it's flight. so reactive. You don't know what you're going to shoot, and you don't have time to think yeah. about it. So you can't right. be like, oh, this would look great in one one, and switch it. And then yeah, shoot it, like. exactly. Well, I tell you. So <laughs> yeah, what I did. Yeah. yeah. So what I did the last. Put it in reverse. Time, so when I went the last time, <laughs> back up. <laughs> yeah. So when I went the last time with uh, Nolan, um, I had I brought two cameras. Nolan Nitschke. That's, yeah, Nolan Nitschke, man. That's my that's my dude. You got to get him on here. He would be a fucking riot on here, man. He's he's no joke. You guys would, man. You would, yeah. You guys could learn a lot of stuff from him, man. You know. Yeah, he was fun that day uh, that we backpacked in the Narrows. Yeah, uh, in yeah. The he's, yeah, Nolan's awesome, <laughs> but um. But yeah, so when I went with him, I brought two bodies and that was that was money because what I did was I kept the mid zoom on one body and then the 70 to 200. That's like the wildlife the, photographer move. Yeah. And then I kept the 70 to 200 on the second body. But you're not using 70 to 200. You're only going up to like 85 millimeter. Right. Um, so you just have both camera bodies ready and what I would do is I would just kind of you know switch in you know the aspect ratio between the two so you know one one camera I'd have in two three and then the other one I'd have in five four and then I would just have, you know I was just switching the bodies out just you know I'd fling one shoot 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 fling the other one shoot 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 you know and I was switching that that's the way to go so if you ever do aerials mm -hmm. whoever's watching this you're doing aerials bring two bodies mid zoom and you know you don't have to bring 70 to 200 but 
um, 85 millimeter prime. I think Hans does the, the does a lot of primes when he's in the air. Um, but yeah, that that was that worked out great because I had like a nice variety of uh, both aspect ratios. And, um, you know, when the landscape would change up and I wanted to do the quick switch up, I could just kind of switch camera body. So, yeah, yeah it was, much. it was, it worked out, it worked out good. Nice. nice. We better get to the last image because these East Coast bastards are starting to doze off. I know. Oh, there I know. It is. That's there Mike. Yawning. He's dozing. He, there, he, he's fading. A little long goddamn day. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be up in uh, four hours. So. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, the one of the got to do a swamp one. Yeah, we had to yeah, feature something yeah. from here, and uh, Come on. it was so hard to pick one. I just picked. I think this is the first one of the gallery, and I mean, this is this one has it all. Like, it's got the mist, it's got yeah. the amazing color, great composition. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of the quintessence of uh, your fall photography from the swamps here. And yeah, man, look, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to start this. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm going to say for me personally, and again, I've, I've used that, you know, several times during this, this image here, this is swamp photography, you know, at its finest. Um, and again, I don't talk very highly of my work, but I think that I built a, a strong enough portfolio from the swamps that I can, I can do this. And, you know, maybe it's uh, the drinks that I've had that's making me talk a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, a little, <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah, so Mike's talking, coming through, you know, talking a little bit more loosely, <laughs> but um, this was on my second visit to the swamps and, um, you know, the first visit was cool, which was like what 2019 2018. No, fuck no, that was, that was like 20. Back. Yeah, like 2016 was my first visit. Okay, uh, Crazy. I think it was 2015. No, 2015 or 2016. Anyway, this was on my first visit. I just, you know, again, all these people that are shooting the swamps now, um, right. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say it like my work has influenced people to go there. I'm not going to get credit for it, which is fine. If not, not it's a, it. it's a really big co coincidence. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not expecting any credit. Like I don't even, I don't even care about it because at this point, it's definitely a correlation for sure. I, like I said, at this point, I don't even care because my work is stand out from there and it's going to take a while for people to even get to this point. Um, but this is my second visit. I think this would have been 2017, Eric. This image would have been 2017. First visit, I did okay. And I knew that there was a lot of potential there. And, you know, it was a little bit different because, you know, my wife and I were traveling at the time. And, you know, I just wanted to get a feel of the area and, you know, just get the experience first, right? And the second visit, you know, I told her, I was like, yo, you can come, but I got, I got work I got to do because I know this <laughs> area has a lot of potential. And she didn't come with me on the second visit, which was fine. Um, but this visit here, 2017 is what, what is really, it took off. And, you know, again, you know, I had that year of maturing and shooting different stuff and, you know, really paying attention to, you know, the little things with the compositions and once once I came I went back the second time it was a wrap you know this is um this is where you're at and you know I've just built you know my work off of this and um you know it's a a mix of fall colors atmosphere spacing composition um processing Light you know, light, knowing how to work the light, you know, yeah, things, soft backlight. Yeah, mm. everything is everything is flowing here. And, you know, again, you know, I'm just I'm gonna talk my shit, you know, getting to this, getting to this level, you, you have to spend some time, you got to spend some time in, in the swamps and not only spending the time there, but just shooting other forest scenes in general, to get an understanding of how to compose yeah. in these kind of conditions, right? It's completely different. You're on a kayak or you're on the shore or you're in the water. You know, a lot of people aren't willing to do that. I am. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have the imagery to speak for that. So, um, you know, I don't want people to think that I'm coming off arrogant or, you know, I'm being an asshole or anything like that. But, 
you know, I put a lot of work in over the years to um, get better at this, right? And, you know, learn off of my mistakes, you know, in the past and, you know, fix those mistakes. So when I go back to visit again, you know, I can, you know, make even better imagery from the last time and even try something different. So, so yeah, um, 2017, man, this, this image here, um, like I said, 2016 was my trial. 2017 was go time. And, you know, from that point on, it's, it's a wrap. So, yeah. So I think it really speaks to use this image as the kind of a sample image when we did the one-on-one -on -one, uh, processing yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and I, I think it, the processing of it, which I'll come back to in a second, I think speaks to exactly what you what you're saying. It's it's the time and the experience, not just in swamp scenes, but in other four scenes and knowing how to work with what's there. Kind of like what we were talking about with the Charlie Kramer image, just mm -hmm. like knowing how to work with what the scene is giving you. Yeah. And and the reason I tie that into your processing is because I, you process this image essentially start to finish as part of that yep. you know thing that we did. And it's simple. Like there's not a lot of processing in this image. Like I was yeah. stunned at how little processing there was in this image. Yeah, um, so because I think a lot of people more, that wouldn't know less. might look at this image and be like, oh, well, you know, maybe there's a lot of processing or he cloned out like half of the stuff and like, you know, but no, like it wasn't. And and so, you know, I think that really speaks to the the more difficult to acquire thing, which is just experience in the field as opposed to yeah. experience, you know, using a, a mouse in Photoshop. Yeah. Um, so the question I have though is, so what made you go to the swamps in the first place? Was there anybody, any photographers like older ones yeah. that you saw that were doing this sort yeah. of thing or did you absolutely. just kind of stumble upon it? No, nah, absolutely. So um, again, um, it goes back to who my influences were, right? Um, at that time, I can just I can tell you it was uh, Kramer, Art Wolf, um, Munch, uh, David Chauvin, who has photographed these areas, uh, Cecil, and Tim Fitzharris. Six guys. Um, out of all you know, six guys, you probably have you know four of those guys are you know um, legendary forest and tree shooters you know what i'm saying so i was always you know drawn to that david chauvin was you know the guy that um influenced me to go down there and what's funny about david um you know rest his soul you know passed away you know some years ago um i reached out to him not even about the swamps honestly um i had again a handful of guys that you know, again, going back, this is going back like almost, you know, 15 years ago now. Um, I had a handful of guys who I reached out to for instruction. And this is way before, you know, you have all the workshops and the stuff that you have now. So again, I count them on one finger. You're gonna, you're gonna get a kick out of this. Mark Adamus, Adam Gibbs, David Chauvin, Cecil Witt, and Flores Van Buell, five guys. Um, Mark responded. Um, he's just early on starting his workshops. Um, Adam Gibbs responded. He wasn't even doing workshops, but was very helpful in the sense that, hey, if you want to come up here, you know, I could show you around. I, you know, I'll even show you some process and stuff. Awesome. Um, David Chauvin, same thing. If you come out here, didn't do workshops or anything like that, I could show you some stuff. Um, Flores, which you know, a lot of people don't know, I, I had uh, some instruction from Flores, you know, way, way, way back in the day when he was active. Mm. And um, uh, there was whoever the other person it was, oh, Cecil, and you know, Cecil helped me out with, uh, you know, the nuggets, right? Remember the, the breadcrumbs. Mm. <laughs> but um, so, you know, with David, you know, I, I, I sent him a couple images and he was like, man, your processing looks fine. He was like, he taught me about web sharpening. Um, and again, you know, the common theme was, you know, mid-tone contrast, which, you know, everything that I talk about now. So, you know, David was like, yeah, so if you ever come down here, you know, you can, you know, get into, you know, some of the swamp stuff. And uh, this guy over here yawning. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Sleep. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> um, but, uh, so disrespectful, so yeah. man. I know it is though, it's all good. Um, but he was like, uh, yeah, if you ever come down, you know, I'll show you around. You know, I didn't, didn't think nothing of it. 
you know, I was still a young artist. I was trying to shoot big wide scenes and chase, chase epic light, which I was failing miserably at and, you know, that kind of thing. So I was like, you know, what? I just want to do something different. So I was like, I told my wife, I was like, I'm going down south. I'm just going to go to Louisiana and go shoot the swamps. And she was like, what? You're going to go shoot where? And I was like, yeah, the swamps, you know, the cypress trees. And she was like, okay. And I asked her, I was like, you want to go? She was like, yeah. So I said, okay. So I went, I rented me a kayak. My wife and I went tandem. And, um, you know, I you know, already had my location where I was going to go. And, um, you know, I went out there, you know, did some exploring. It was really cool. And then I emailed the dude, David, afterwards. I was like, hey, you know, I, I explored this area. You know, it was super cool. I had a good time. And he was like, he was like, here, here's my number. I'll meet up with you tomorrow and, you know, we'll go shoot. I was like, damn. I was like, that was, you know, wasn't expecting that. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I met with him and um, we went to the same area where I, where I originally went, but he took me like a little further in into some other spots and was, you know, telling me about his experiences, you know, on the bayou and that kind of thing. And um, yeah, man, it was, uh, you know, the rest was kind of history from there, but yeah. Um, 2016, you know, David Chauvin got an opportunity to hang out with him and, and meet him. That's and amazing. He, he, mm. he, he died, the, what, four years ago? I think so. Yeah. 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 It wasn't that um, long ago. Yeah. But he is, to me, he was the, there's one other guy. Um, uh, what was that guy's name? He's a, he was a local Louisiana guy. And this is way before, you know, some of these other guys that were down there shooting. He had a book that he did back in like the early 70s of shooting the bayou, you know, before, um, you know, all these other guys. And um, yeah, those are the only two guys that I had seen that had imagery from there. So, um, mm. yeah, that's, that's kind of kind of where, where it started. Well, I feel like I feel like you've definitely... Uh become a part of the story of this place with your Mm -hmm. impressive portfolio of work and uh very extensive portfolio as well and it's pretty amazing what you've been able to produce yeah i appreciate that man i just think there's there's a lot of opportunity down there um you've definitely done your own thing with it it doesn't look like yeah uh, Yeah. like you've replicated what the people did before you. not not even not even remotely close and and i'll be honest with you this this last trip the last set of stuff that i got from here is kind of crazy and you know again, I, people are going to be chasing that, you know what I'm saying? And just, you know, light conditions, composition, processing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wild, man. So a lot of, a lot of cool stuff coming, going to be coming from this area, you know, when I get to, you know, more processing of those images. But this year, when you and I go down there, that's when there's going to be the best light, best conditions that you've ever seen before. And it's just going to be. Dude, and you know, it's so funny because um, that's going to be hard because one, well, when Miles and I, when I brought Miles down here, he lost his shit. We literally had, we were down there for like, I don't know, five or six days. And every single day we had like mist and fog every single day. Fog is... Mm super rare but miss you know that happens when you get the right conditions right um nolan and i you know i just i brought him down there last year and every day we had missed we had missed so it was like you know the conditions are you know were ideal again so i don't know man it's gonna be hard it's gonna be tough usually three in a row (laughs) Uh, it's going to be it's going to be very challenging so i don't know you might actually be the guy that actually jinx me <laughs> <laughs> i i would be that guy uh, he jinxed yeah. all of us man yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> welcome to the club yeah, man, but, but yeah, I, so i've learned how to work with like poor conditions and poor lighting because that's like all i encounter so yeah. i've just learned no, how to make but, the best of it but even with you know certain even with you know okay conditions you can still make like good shit here you just gotta again experience you know you have to know how to work light and you know have to you have to know how to you know come up with you know interesting compositions mm-hmm. so, yeah it's, get in it's the water. cool to see um it's cool to see david chauvin's like black and white interpretations yep. of this whole mm-hmm. landscape because there's so much amazing color okay, yeah but, man he but yeah, when he, he flips over to monochrome it's just it's a whole yeah. nother landscape, you know? Yeah, yeah, man. He, 
he he um david was just such a talented guy like even if you look at well i don't even i'll, I'll tell you guys offline where to go to really see more of his stuff but um yeah he has um he has it you know he's just he was just a super talented guy man and you know awesome individual and yeah he was awesome yeah i i yeah. bet he was yeah he's definitely definitely missed hey man great stuff man appreciate yeah. all the uh insight and stories you shared with us about everything super yeah, fascinating man. and always great to chat with you and catch up a bit likewise man likewise. great stuff man great images i love that i probably only knew like three or four of those photographers not even three i think of the photographers that you mentioned so it's always good to get some new names mm -hmm. out there it's one of the things you try to do so yep definitely did that cool cool great cool. stuff well like i said man i hope you guys enjoyed it you know i just tried to you know bring something different and you know hopefully open up people's eyes to you know seeing you know the work of others and you know some of the you know older you know gentlemen that inspired me over the years and um i think it you know says a lot about you know, where we've come with image making. And um, I think those guys, man, they all deserve, you know, credit and, you know, they just, they're not getting it. And I don't, not that they're looking for it, but they deserve to be, to be mentioned. Agreed. Well, and, and, and not just for them, like for us, like the way it benefits us, like finding their great work and being inspired yeah. by it and having our oh eyes gosh, open. Yeah. yeah, that's right, man. So, yeah. And better, we got rid of Paul. Paul <laughs> missed out on he missed out on all the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buddy. Well, cool, David. Thanks for everything. Yep. Um, cheers, everybody. I would cheers. cheers I'm, all I'm, I'm all out. I'm, I'm all out. Yeah, I'm too. Yeah. All good. Likewise.